Chapter 141, Onward to the Central Plains A few hundred thousand pounds of fierce beast meat was piled in the center of the village. The entire Lian tribal clan, which comprised of a few thousand people, was gathered in the central square of the village. They looked at the mountain of meat with shocked but radiant eyes. This was fierce beast meat. It was worth more than cattle meat and tasted delicious. Eating a piece of it gave a person strength, allowing them to stay full for a day. A few hundred thousand pounds of meat could last for a long time. But while some people rejoiced, some people lamented. Those who previously lorded over others in the Lian tribal clan were bitter. They knew that no matter how great the fierce beast meat was, they would not receive much. Yunur, you're back. Yi Yun had been gone for three days. Although the Jin Long Weiman assured that Yi Yun was fine, Jiang Shiro could not help feel worried. Seeing Yi Yun return safely with so much meat, Jiang Shiro was delighted and proud. When Jiang Shiro, together with Zhou Shioka appeared, the villagers quickly gave way to them. Everyone looked at the two girls with respect, even in an ingratiating manner. They knew that these two girls were the two princesses of the Lian tribal clan. They had absolute authority with Yi Yun. Whoever offended them would be risking their lives. Sis Shiro, it's up to you how you want to distribute all this meat. Yi Yun gave the authority of distributing the meat to Jiang Shiro. Immediately, all the people of the Lian tribal clan looked at Jiang Shiro with watery eyes, wishing they could kneel down in front of her and lick the ground she walked upon. Jiang Shiro was, after all, a girl. She may be more resilient than the average girl, but it was inevitable she would be soft-hearted. By letting Jiang Shiro distribute the meat, it was difficult for the wicked people to not receive any. There were hundreds of thousands of pounds of meat, which averaged out to about 30 pounds of meat per person. Yi Yun had already expected this point when he gave the authority to Jiang Shiro to distribute, because he had other plans today. Lu Tai, come over, Yi Yun beckoned Lu Tai to come over. This made Lu Tai thrilled. Yi Yun had taken the initiative to call him. This was a good omen. It proved that Yi Yun had intentions to make him one of his henchmen. Lu Tai was extremely excited. He came before Yi Yun in a lowly manner. He cupped his fists and half kneeled. Little me is in the presence of the young master. The young master is brilliant and all powerful, killing desolate beasts like dogs and fierce beasts like chickens. Enough! Yi Yun interrupted Lu Tai's nonsense in an exasperated manner. These members of the warrior preparation camp had made sucking up a natural trait of theirs. It seemed like they would become uncomfortable the moment they did not suck up. Young master, little me has something to report to you, said Lu Tai. Oh? Yi Yun raised his eyebrows. Lian Xingyu has died, Lu Tai had received the news in the previous night. Lian Xingyu was already crippled and did not have much life left in him. Coupled with his angered heart, he was at the extreme point of despair. Despair and pain can destroy a person. If one did not wish to live, death was of course imminent. Also, Zhao Taizhu has died as well. As for Lian Suihua, she is still alive. But the villagers have made their stance clear. They want to be loyal towards young master. Whenever they see Lian Suihua, they would walk around her and not interact with her. The Lian tribal clan had a food shortage. It was difficult for people with serious injuries like Zhao Taizhu and Lian Suihua, or cripples to survive. If normal people were starving to death, what more them? Zhao Taizhu had relieved himself but Lian Suihua had been isolated by the villagers. Her outcome was easily imaginable. Yi Yun was unperturbed about the matter. They deserved their outcomes. If they wanted to harm others, they had to live with the consequences. Young master, may little me know your command? Lu Tai said in an attentive manner. Oh. Lu Tai. Monitor the distribution of meat. If anyone has any malicious thoughts, just attack them. Also, in a few days, I'll be leaving the cloud wilderness. 
I will take about a hundred people with me. I have already made my list, so make the preparations. Saying that, Yi Yun handed Lu Tai a piece of paper. Zhang Tan had promised Yi Yun that when the Jin Longwei left, Yi Yun could bring some people with him to his territory. It was impossible for Yi Yun to bring the entire Lian tribal clan to his territory. Firstly, the territory could not hold that many people and secondly, many of them were wicked, covetous of small gains, prone to bullying, and like to strike a man when he is down. Compared to the tyrants, they were not any better. They did not become tyrants because they lacked the power. If they had the power, they would definitely have gone from bad to worse. These people were best left in the vast wilderness, as for the good people, Yi Yun will bring them to his territory. Yi Yun had these intentions early on. Lu Tai excitedly took the piece of paper. The other people of the Lian tribal clan had also heard Yi Yun's words. Yi Yun was taking people out of the vast wilderness and into his territory. They dryly and helplessly looked at the piece of paper in Lu Tai's hands, as if that piece of paper was a precious treasure map. Compared to going into the central plains, dozens of pounds of meat was nothing. Indeed, it was because Yi Yun had plans on leaving, so he didn't have much use for the meat. Hence, he let Zhang Shiro distribute the meat, allowing the wicked villagers to get more. With a few pounds of meat, they would be able to weather the food shortage problem. As such, Yi Yun had show extreme forbearance. In the future, they were to live on in the cloud wilderness and their lives depended on themselves. Lu Tai breathed quickly as he scanned through the name list. The number of words he recognized did not exceed the number of fingers he had on one hand, but he knew to recognize his name. Lu Tai saw his name. His heart was so touched. Yi Yun had placed his name higher up in the list. This made Lu Tai grateful to the point of tears. He swore that he would follow Yi Yun loyally. He knew he had no skills besides sucking up. He decided to lead a peaceful life by running errands for Yi Yun in the future. Lu Tai's greatest advantage was him knowing how to deal with matters. Yi Yun decided to make him a butler in the future, which could save him a lot of trouble. Thank you young master, thank you young master. Lu Tai out to Yi Yun three times. He was grateful to Yi Yun from the bottom of his heart. He was determined to go through thick and thin for Yi Yun in the future. To have a flourishingly life in the future by following such a master, who wouldn't want it? After the meat was distributed, the name list was announced. It was Zhang Shiro who taught Lu Tai how to read the words. The names on the list were all the kind people who had been pointed out by Zhang Shiro and Zhou Xiaoka a few days ago. These people were delighted to tears. Those who were not selected looked as if they had lost their parents. Their faces turned ashen. The joy from receiving the meat vanished. The meat was bound to finish. What would happen to them after they finished eating it? Imagining the tough lives they would have to suffer in the vast wilderness, they felt their future was full of gloom and despair. Yi Yun was unconcerned. There were too many people suffering in the vast wilderness. What was the small Lian tribal clan to him? What's more, they only had themselves to blame. In this world, the people talk about karma, but this was just a beautiful wish that people in suffering had. God wasn't fair. Fairness was determined by humans. With absolute strength, Yi Yun could formulate his own form of justice, goodness will be rewarded, and the vice will have an evil recompense. This was what strength brought. Yi Yun had such thoughts. That night, the Lian tribal clan was bustling with excitement. Under Lu Tai's suggestion, the people set up a bonfire party in the central square. Fierce beasts were roasted and the meat fragrance permeated the air. After the people finished the meat, they sang and danced. Some brave youths even took the opportunity to express their love to the girls they fancied. Zhang Shiro did not participate in this bonfire party, resulting in Zhou Xiaoka becoming the absolute protagonist. Many people tried to approach Ant Wang with friendly faces, hoping to propose. But Ant Wang did not bother with those people. 
Oomph. You are just weaklings, yet you want my daughter. Don't think I do not know that you want to use my daughter to get onto Kid Oyun's big boat, following Kid Oyun into the central plains. Dream on. My daughter may not be good enough for Kid Oyun, but I will not let her be mixed in with the likes of you. In the future, Xiao Ka can be considered Kid Oyun's god sister. Who knows, if Kid Oyun likes Xiao Ka, Xiao Ka might even be taken in as a concubine when she grows up. This was what Aunt Wang looked forward to the most. Aunt Wang knew that Yi Yun was most likely to marry a daughter from an eminent family. Xiao Ka becoming a concubine was already very good. With these thoughts in mind, all those who came to propose were treated as toads lusting over swan meat by Aunt Wang. Some of them even had warts bigger than toads had. To think they didn't look at themselves in the mirror. This bonfire party continued late into the night before it ended. The next morning, under the envious stares of many people, the people who were chosen by Yi Yun entered the large baskets carried by the near-horned beasts. Following the Jin Longwei under Sun Jingrui's lead, they headed towards the Tao tribal clan. Along the way, all of them were cheerful. This was the first time they were stepping out of the Lian tribal clan's wonderland. They were about to leave the vast wilderness and step into the fertile central plains. How could they not be excited? Even Yi Yun was full of anticipation for the future. Yi Yun and company received news of the Jin Long Wei leaving the vast wilderness not long after they arrived at the Tao tribal clan. After reorganizing at the Tao tribal clan for a few days, Yi Yun split his people among the ten big baskets carried by near-horned beasts. And they stepped out of the cloud wilderness, onward to the the kingdom's central plains. Chapter 142, Divine Capital Dozens of near-horned beasts, led by Zhang Tan, galloped through the vast wilderness. The number of Jin Longwei troops that had come to Cloud Wilderness numbered 10,000. The team led by Zhang Tan was just one of them. Yi Yun also knew the reason behind the Jin Longwei's foray into the Cloud Wilderness. It was due to the Purple Cloud's birth that had happened a few months ago. It had alarmed the Taiya Kingdom, causing it to send the Jin Longwei to search the vast wilderness for any treasures. In the end, no treasure was found, but an ancient mystic realm was found. Marquis Wen Yun came to the Cloud Wilderness personally to search the mystic realm. Due to an array of the mystic realm that they could not resolve, they had to seek the help of Su Jie. That mystic realm was very big, so Marquis Wen Yun and company would take a long while to get out. Added with the fact that the treasure was not found even after months of searching, the Jin Long Wei no longer had any reason to stay in the cloud wilderness. So from yesterday, the 10,000 Jin Long Wei troops were ordered to leave the cloud wilderness. Zheng Tan's team was the first batch to leave. The vast wilderness was a great expanse. Within it, there were high mountains that stretched tens of thousands of meters into the sky. The peaks were covered with snow from years of accumulation. Glaciers blotted out the sky and covered up the earth. Past the glaciers were canyons with raging rivers as vast as the sea. Yi Yin followed the Jin Longwei team and on this journey, he saw the magnificent scenery of the vast wilderness. It was rough but grand, which amazed him. Without the army accompanying him, and without the special mount, it would be too difficult to traverse the vast wilderness. There was a legend that long time ago, a glorious divine kingdom stood in the the cloud wilderness. It slowly declined and many martial arts heritage were lost, leaving a few small surviving tribes. They traveled for more than a month. Even while traveling, Yi Yun did not show any negligence to his cultivation. Yi Yun wore the flowing mercury down Lin Xintong gave him. When he sat on the near-horned beast, Yi Yun lowered the flowing mercury gown to its lowest weight in consideration for the near-horned beast. But once the team stopped, Yi Yun would immediately increase the weight and binding of the flowing mercury gown during his cultivation. Yi Yun would wear the flowing mercury gown to train. In the past, Yi Yun could only demonstrate the dragon-ribbed tiger bone fist a few dozen times. But now, due to the flowing mercury gown's restraint, he could only do it seven to eight times. He would find his energy severely depleted. 
It was not the weight but the binding the flowing mercury gown had on his body that drained his energy. Be it punching, kicking, stretching or leaping, his speed was much slower than usual. When his energy depleted, he would take supplements. However, the bone relics Yi Yun had accumulated when he entered the desolate human valley were running out. Eventually, Yi Yun not only had to rely on the purple crystal to absorb Heaven Earth Yuan Qi, but he had to eat large amounts of desolate beast meat. Thankfully with the elephant swallowing technique, Yi Yun did not reach the point of running out of energy for his cultivation. This made Yi Yun sigh. He realized that the amount of resources expended by warriors could only be described as horrifying. But such high-intensity training had very obvious effects. In this month, Yi Yin got more used to the pressure applied on him by the flowing mercury gown. If he lowered the binding strength of the flowing mercury gown to the lowest, it was like he was wearing a tight shirt and it was not restricting his movement. A month flew by as they traveled several hundreds of thousands of miles, and after traveling through a long distance array, they arrived at a border town. After waiting in the border town for three days, they regrouped with other Jean Longway teams. Traveling through another long distance array, they finally reached their destination, the Divine Kingdom's central plains. When Ian walked out of the long distance array following a group of Jean Long Wei, what he saw made him take a deep breath. They found themselves on an extremely long precipice. And below the precipice, there was a 10,000 feet drop. This cliff was extremely smooth. It was as if a mountain had been cleaved into two by a god. One half was removed, leaving the other half there like a ruler that spanned across. Under the 10,000 feet drop, what stood at the limits of human vision was an even more shocking scene. There stood a thick divine tower. The divine tower was black and was like a world tree, reaching up into the sky. Around the unbelievable thick tower was a huge city. This city's walls were dark red in color. They were tall and thick. It looked like the gates of heaven from afar. Above the city walls were hundreds of airships in the sky. Each airship could carry tens of thousands of people. In between the airships, there were various spirit beasts flying. These spirit beasts were covered in scales and grew dragon horns. Some of them had colorful feathers while others looked terrifying with dragon heads and lion bodies. Every spirit beast gave off a very strong aura, more than a hundred times greater than the Jean Longway's near-horned beast mounts. The people could tell that people were riding these spirit beasts even from afar. It was hard to believe what sort of people could ride these ancient beasts. The people of the vast cloud wilderness with numerous tribal clans have all been living in a well all their lives, Yi Yun muttered to himself. He had heard it more than once in the vast wilderness that this world was incredibly big. He also knew the unimaginable power the big sects and the ancient divine kingdom had. But even after being mentally prepared, Ian still found it hard to settle the shock he had encountered when he saw it with his own eyes. It was amazing. The picture in front of him could not be described with the word majestic. Yi Yun had received proud results in the vast wilderness but when placed in the ancient Taiwa kingdom, it was nothing. Yes, from the heaven, earth, mystic and yellow ranks, he was only appraised at the mystic rank. And within the mystic rank, he wasn't at the highest grade. Yi Yun was still all right. The people that had accompanied Yi Yun to the heartlands were completely dumbfounded. The scene in front of them was beyond their comprehension. What is this place? Is it heaven? The world could actually be like this? While Yi Yun was still reeling from his shock, he felt a soft hand place over his palm. Yi Yun turned and realized it was Jiang Xiaro. Yuner, you still have a long way to go. Yes. Yi Yun nodded with a smile. Jiang Xiaro was always able to tell what was on his mind immediately. In Yi Yun's mind, Jiang Xiaro was a kind and considerate girl. Zhang Tan patted Yi Yun on the shoulders and said, That city is the divine capital. The Taiya Kingdom has 108 states and 24 wildlands. This divine capital is one of the biggest cities within the Taiya Kingdom's Jing state. Divine Capital 
one of the biggest city in the Jing state, Yun's eyebrow twitched. Such a large city was just one of the many jurisdictions of the Taiya kingdom, it was only one out of all the biggest cities. The heritage of the divine kingdom was self-explanatory. Let's go. Let's enter the city. The Jin Long Wei has a big camp in the divine capital. That is our territory. Saying that, Zhang Tan pulled on the reins. The near-horned beast ran along the cliff and after an hour, went around the large cliff to the grand entrance of the divine capital. Upon closer look, the divine capital was magnificent. The divine door was like the door to heaven in legends. It was almost a hundred meters tall. In front of the divine door, two groups of guards stood neatly. They were dressed in shiny silver armor. Each of them had a four-foot-long saber hanging by their waists. They had an hidden imposing air. They were like a row of dormant primordial desolate beasts. It was clear with one look that these people had gone through all sorts of bloodshed, and they were not just chosen for their fierce looks. One could tell the strength of a city's heritage by looking at its guards. These guards were all warriors at the peak of purple blood. Upon thinking of this, Yun felt breathless. Dismount. With a wave of Zhang Tan's hand, everyone had to dismount. Zhang Tan smiled, it's a rule of the divine capital. Commoners have to dismount when going through the city gates, but kingdom knights and barons are not restricted by these rules. They can ride their mounts while traveling through the city gates. If we go one step higher, such as viscounts or higher ranks, they can ride their flying mounts and fly over the city walls directly into the divine capital. In the Tai A divine kingdom, ranks are made clear and order is strictly obeyed. Oh? Rank, Yi Yun faltered. Wouldn't making such a clear difference in rank incite the unhappiness of the people? Zhang Tan paused before saying, why would they be unhappy? In the Tai A Divine Kingdom, all the people with noble ranks have to go far to fight enemies. They have to resist the attacks of fierce and desolate beasts. They can be said to be putting their lives on the line to ensure the safety of the commoners. The higher the rank of a noble, the greater exploits they have accomplished. There are so many people who want to enter the Tai A Divine Kingdom's lands to lead a safe life. They can only feel grateful to the warriors who protect them. So why would they be dissatisfied? Zheng Tan's words enlightened Yi Yun. Yes, this alternate world was not a peaceful one. A person's status and glory had to be earned with their lives. Obtaining a status by inheritance or by relationships would make people unhappy, but the honor gained from risking one's life would give them respect and awe. As such, in the Taiya Divine Kingdom, the status of being a noble not only meant privilege, it also meant infinite glory. With this thoughts in mind, Yi Yun looked up to the sky. There were huge, luxurious airships and gallant spirit birds and spirit beasts. Noticing Yi Yun's eyes, Zheng Tan laughed, What are you thinking about? Yi Yun hid nothing and said, I was thinking that one day, I will be sitting on those airships, or riding those flying spirit beasts, or primordial beasts into the divine capital. Ha ha ha! Zheng Tan laughed heartily. Yes. That's the way. As a person who practices martial arts, that has to be the way. There is no limit to the martial arts way. We need to continuously climb higher. Saying that, he patted Yi Yun's shoulder firmly. He liked this youth more and more. Whatever Yi Yun had done in the Lian tribal clan was reported to Zhang Tan by Sun Jingrui. Upon receiving the report, Zheng Tan felt that Yi Yun's temperament was very much to his liking. A warrior had to be as such, to settle vengeances quickly, and to discriminate between friends and foes. Chapter 143, Jin Long Camp The divine capital's city walls were seven to eight feet thick. After passing through the city walls, Yi Yun saw the vast city within. The main street of the divine capital was wide enough for ten near-horned beasts to walk side by side. The two sides were lined with various shops, inns, cultivation grounds, and fighting arenas. The shops sold desolate bone relics, weapons, and all sort of treasures. There were all sorts of treasures that were priceless. 
Many of the inns that provided accommodation for warriors had their own spirit arrays that condensed heaven earth yuan chi, making it a good cultivation ground. The cost of staying one night was enough to last a commoner for many lifetimes. As for the fighting arenas, they were full of experts that came from all corners of the divine kingdom. Some earned resources in the fighting arena, while some used it to hone their skills, hoping to break through in the midst of battle. Along the way, Yi Yun could feel that the divine capital was opening up a brand new world for him. This impact was freakish. The divine capital was too big and the city covered such a vast area, with many houses. It was enough to accommodate a large number of troops. In the Jin Longwei territory, just the barracks stretched 20 miles, together with other cultivation grounds, it covered a wide area. But yet, all of this easily fit in the divine capital. Before he entered the Jin Longwei camp, Yi Yun could see spirit energy charging into the sky from the camp. This spirit energy was overwhelming as it covered the sky. The clouds in the sky were blown away by this surge. It was an extremely masculine killing intent. Even from far, Yi Yun could feel the pressure from that oppressive rush. It made him distraught. He. Ha! From far, Yi Yun could hear the shouts of the soldiers training. The shouts rumbled and the noise was deafening. Cracking of joints and twanging of tendons could also be heard. These sounds prevented birds and eagles from flying across the camp. How is it? This is the Jean Longway Divine Capital's camp. Come on, let's go in. They went through strict checks at the entrance before entering the camp. In the camp, everything was very strict. The camp guard's aura were even greater than those that guarded the Divine Capital's entrance. On the road to the camp, cart after cart of beast meat were being shipped inside. These meats were all fierce beast meat. Many of these dead fierce beasts were bigger than elephants. If one was cured and given to a commoner family, it would allow a family of three to eat it for ten years. But in the Jean Longway camp, the people who trained consumed a lot of energy. By using the elephant swallowing technique, a fierce beast the size of an elephant was nothing. When Yi Yun looked, he saw lines of people moving grain, meat, and vegetables. It was a sight to be seen. An army's battle power could be understood just by looking at the food they ate. I'll let your sister and servants wait here. They are not allowed to enter the camp. The commander of the divine capital's Jin Longwei is General Yen. All the chosen Jin Longwei elites have to first meet with General Yen. Besides the cloud wilderness, there have been many new recruits all over the Divine Kingdom. Soon, there will be a Jin Longwei assembly to welcome the recruits. Oh! Yi Yun was shocked. It seemed that out of a large number of troops that were chosen at the kingdom's selection, only a small portion were sent to the Divine Capital City. The other recruits were scattered around in the Divine Kingdom's territories. It was expected. The Taiya Divine Kingdom's Jin Longwei had so many manning stations. Which station wouldn't need recruits? How many recruits came to the Divine Capital's Jin Longwei camp this time? Yi Yun casually asked. About 1,000 to 2,000 people. Those that were made elites number about 100 to 200. Only the elites could meet Yen Menglong. In Zhang Tan's team, besides Yi Yun who had the qualification to do so, Hu Yu was the only other one. Hu Yu was a quiet man who didn't say much on the trip. He and Yi Yun followed Zhang Tan past the heavily guarded rows of guards before they reached the square in front of the general's camp. At the entrance to the square stood the personal guards of General Yen. They were like bronze sculptures, motionlessly standing there. After passing the authentication, Yi Yun and Hu Yu went into the square. There were already dozens of people waiting. These people were, without any exceptions, young men. They all looked fine, no one of them looked like an ordinary person. These people were the young warriors that had passed the kingdom's selection. Looking at their clothes, some of them wore extremely luxurious clothes. Some of them were sewn from divine silk which made it difficult for a normal sword to cut through. Others had expensive weapons with them. 
The cost of those weapons were much higher than Yun's Yinchi saber. These people aren't from the cloud wilderness Yun suddenly realized. This kingdom's selection was not only held in the cloud wilderness, but everywhere within the divine kingdom. As such, many people were recruited. They were the young elites from all parts of the divine kingdom. Yun noticed there were people surrounding a large animal skin drum which he did not know why. Upon the arrival of Yun, Zheng Tan and Huya, they immediately attracted the attention of many people. Ha ha! Isn't this thousand households Zheng? Just as Zhang Tan brought Yun and Huya into the square, a stout man came forward. The man was wearing a shiny gold armor with his helmet held to his chest. He looked powerful. Not only that, he had larger than average ears that protruded out, making him look comical. Following behind the big-eared man was six youths in extraordinary outfits. Thousand Households Lu. Zheng Tan cupped his fists as he smiled and licked his lips. Yi Yun could feel that there was spark within Zheng Tan's eyes when he looked at the big-eared man. In the army, they would all work together in the battlefield. But in private, different teams vied against each other. During normal training, demonstrations or up on the battlefield fighting, all of them would stretch to their fullest to compete against one another. To soldiers, the collective glory was their pride. So whenever the Jean Longway's thousand households meet, they would try to impress each other. TSK Thousand Households Zhang, you went to recruit troops in the Cloud Wilderness. This recruit must be from the Cloud Wilderness. The big-eared man pointed at Huya. He did not count Yun because Yun was wearing his flying fish robe with a Yinchi saber by his side. He did not look like youth from the vast wilderness. As for Huya, he had a wildness associated with him like that of a wolf or leopard. It made him look like he came from the vast wilderness. So the big-eared man thought Yun was just a young master accompanying Zhang Tan into the Jin Longwei camp. Zhang Tan did not reply, and the big-eared man carried on, Bro, a few days ago I went to the Nanjun province of the Jing state and there were a few family clans there where I chose a few good seedlings. Speaking of the Jing state Nanjun province's family clans, they are full of astounding young men. Too bad for that there's were not enough spots for me, causing me to miss out on some good seedlings. Such a waste. The big-eared man said it as he eyed the youths behind him. Clearly these youths were selected by the big-eared man. They were indeed handsome and grand. It was obvious that they were top-notch. These six kids are all going to become Jean Longway elites. As long as they pass the recruit training, they will enter my Sky Wolf camp and become elite soldiers under my care. According to unspoken rules of the Jean Longway, whoever selected the soldiers could recruit them under their flag. This was similar to the imperial examinations. Whoever the examiner admitted would become the students of the examiner. Hence, the various thousand households were secretly competing. The selected disciples would become their own soldiers, who wouldn't be more meticulous. Zhang Tan, who had gone to the cloud wilderness, had suffered. The talent in the cloud wilderness was much worse. As for the big-eared man, he had gone to the Jing state Nanjun province where there were large family clans. It was a gravy train. The big-eared man was a veteran and had been competing with Zhang Tan for years. He had managed to get back at Zhang Tan this time round, making him extremely happy. Especially since Zhang Tan had only chosen Huya as an elite member. Not comparing on quality, just by the quantity, Zhang Tan had lost to him. Zhang Tan smiled and stroked his chin saying, Lu Big Ear, you don't have to flaunt in front of me. Indeed, the six of them are not bad. But they may not be better than the two I chose. It is about the quality, not the quantity. Zhang Tan was confident in his taste. Yi Yun was needless to say, but even Huya was extraordinary. On this trip, Zhang Tan had been observing Huya and found him to his liking. Two. Lu Big Ear was surprised. He had originally thought that Zhang Tan had only chosen one and never expected Zhang Tan to say he had chosen two. The first was Hu Ya, then the second was. 
he looked with astonishment at Yi Yun. This young master kid was a recruit Cheng Tan chose from the cloud wilderness? How could it be, his clothes? Lu Bigyer had already noticed that Yi Yun was wearing the flying fish robe. As a soldier of the Divine Kingdom, Lu Bigyer was extremely sensitive to the dressings of the various nobles. How could he not notice the flying fish robe? Although the six youths behind him wore clothes that were made of material with much higher quality than the flying fish robe, it was no f asterisk asterisk king use. The value of the clothes was determined by the meaning the clothes represented. Wealthy businessmen could wear expensive clothes, but the respect they gained was much worse. He's wearing a flying fish robe and has been made a kingdom knight. The recruit you brought from the cloud wilderness has been made a kingdom knight? Lu Bigyer was stunned. He could not believe that Yi Yun was originally not a noble. How could a kingdom knight come from the cloud wilderness? There could only be one possibility and that was Zhang Tan had chosen Yi Yun, and by pleading to the upper echelon of the Jin Longwei, helped him become a kingdom knight. He was just a kingdom knight too, the same rank as a damn kid standing beside Zhang Tan. How could Lu Bigyer feel comfortable about it? I chose six recruits, each like a dragon, and did not request a title from headquarters. You went to the Cloud Wilderness, a godforsaken place to select and actually managed to confer a kingdom knight. Chapter 144, Thunder Sky Drum It had to be said that the shocking power of a kingdom knight was great. Especially among the young elites present. Who didn't want to make great contributions to be made into a noble? Kingdom Knight was the starting point for everyone. But some people might never reach the starting point in all their lives. Now, Yi Yun, a kid shorter than them by a head, was a Kingdom Knight. Suddenly, many eyes were cast on Yi Yun. Especially the six youths behind Lu Big Ear, who looked at Yi Yun with glittering eyes. Without words, there wouldn't be martial arts. In this world where strength mattered the most, no one seceded from each other. This kid came out of the vast wilderness as a recruit and was already conferred the title of Kingdom Knight. I chose from so many geniuses in the large family clans and they were only Jin Longwei elites. Humph. You are just picking a general among dwarfs. In the vast wilderness, the warriors are generally of low standards, so the occasional talent is an odd. Even if they were astounding with our standards, we could easily sweep them up in the cloud wilderness. This kingdom knight conferment must be child's play. The people used Yuan Qi to discuss privately. Due to the difference in status between the nobles and the commoners, they did not dare to question Yi Yun. In the cloud wilderness, most of the people in the kingdom's selection was just to make up the numbers. Most of them were eliminated after the first round. But in the Tai A Divine Kingdom, all the young talents participated in the kingdom's selection. Most of them were nurtured by big family clans, and were all considered elites. The selection's battles were relating scenes, with rounds of fighting, competition and tragic outcomes. So the young talents that stood out among the large family clans had especially great superiority complexes. They felt that they were better than others. In fact, their superiority wasn't unfounded. Under normal circumstances, the young talents from the vast wilderness could not be compared to the talents from the central plains. I see so this kid is from the cloud wilderness. What's your name little brother? Lu Bigir touched his stubble and watched with a smile at Yi Yun. I'm Yi Yun, Yi Yun cupped his hands. Oh. Yi Yun Lu Bigir nodded. Interesting, little kid, in the future we will be competitors. Lu Bigir said without any niceties. By the side, Zheng Tan said, this might not happen. Shallow waters cannot hold a dragon. After Yi Yun passes recruit training, he is unlikely to stay under me. I don't think I can keep him. The outstanding warriors of the Jin Long Wei had special arrangements. Those that stood out to the point of alarming the Jin Long Wei commander would be given special appointments by the commander. As such, Zheng Tan would not be able to keep Yi Yun under him. Lu Bigir could tell what Zheng Tan meant, 
as he shook his big ears and looked at Zhang Tan with an incredulous look, old Zhang, you sure are confident. Ha ha ha. You too. Zhang Tan's words were full of pretense, making Yi Yun speechless. While in the Tao tribal clan Zhang Tan appeared extremely serious, but now in the Jin Longwei's camp, in front of his rival, he was also pretty good at shamming. It seemed like when soldiers get together, they like to brag, expressing their troops or their own strength. But this bragging would arouse the competitiveness of others. Lu Big Ear was extremely disgruntled. He said to Yi Yun, little bro, take a look around. It will be a while before General Yen arrives. Lu Big Ear patted Yi Yun on the shoulder and gave him a meaningful glance. The Jin Longwei Square was large, covering a distance of more than 300 meters. The most conspicuous item was the large drum in the middle of the square. The drum's surface was black. It needed about seven to eight men encircling it before they could carry it. The drum was placed on a bracket and the bracket was 10 meters tall and made of black iron. The metal legs were deeply buried into the ground. In front of the drum was a raised platform. A person could stand on the platform to hit the drums. The drumstick was a purple beast's leg bone and one end of it was connected to the drum's bracket with a metal chain. This drum was very impressive. Lu Big Ear noticed Ian's interest in the drums and said by his side, this is the Thunder Sky Drums. I'm not sure if you have seen the battles between armies. Soldiers will line up in a row and wait. When the order is made to charge, a specialist drummer will drum on it. This is what it means by rousing the spirit with the beat of the drum. And when the soldiers are withdrawn, a drummer will beat the gongs, hence the saying, beat the gongs and withdraw the army. This thunder sky drums is our divine capital Jean Longway's war drum. During a war, it is brought to the front lines. When it is drummed, it will cause the heavens and earth to tremble. When our soldiers charge, they will gain strength from the drum beat, giving them greater morale and multiply their battle power. So this is a war drum. Yi Yun touched his cheek as he carefully looked at the drum. In the era of cold metal, wars needed drums. One reason was to give the signal to charge, the second reason was to boost the morale of the soldiers. For armies, the importance of having a good drum mattered greatly. Lu Big Ear carried on, this Thunder Sky Drum's drum skin is made of Heaven Ox's hide. This Heaven Ox has the bloodline of the divine beast, Kiyu Ox. It can be considered a primordial desolate beast. Its hide is impervious to swords and resistant against fire. Back in the day, the divine capital city's city lord killed a Heaven Ox. He soaked the leather in solution for 10 years, and after 10,000 trashes, this hide was used as the war drum skin. Every beat on this thunder sky drum will result in a vibratory force in response. Warriors without a solid base would not dare beat it, because the aftershock can tear them apart. The divine beast's key wax looks like an ox, but it only has one leg and it has a deafening roar. Records indicate that an ancient emperor used its hide for a drum and used a thunder beast's bone, which created a sound that could be heard throughout heaven and on earth, impressing the whole world. Lu Big Ear slapped the thunder sky drum's bracket and said proudly, How is it? Do you feel the drum's magnificence? When the Jin Longwei is not at war, this thunder sky drum is kept in the square. The members of the Jin Longwei who are undergoing training will find pride by beating it. Usually, an early stage purple blood warrior can barely beat it once or twice and find himself exhausted after. The rebound shock can really tear you apart. Lu Big Ear said with an expressive smug look. After listening to the introduction, Yi Yun had a surge of hot blood rising. No one knew what sort of desolate bone that heavy and thick drumstick was made from. It made Yi Yun want to pick it up and give a try at knocking it. Look there, Lu Big Ear pointed to the side. The Thunder Sky Drum tests a warrior's body's resilience and strength, while that array over there tests a warrior's movement. Yi Yun looked in the direction that Lu Big Ear pointed at and noticed that beside the Thunder Sky Drum was a vacant ground. On the vacant ground, there was a large array painted. This array looked a huge heptagon. 
Above the array floated a dozen burning flame balls. These round balls were red and not connected to anything. It could fly around freely in the air, which interested Yi Yun. Ha, huh, these balls are called frost metal blood balls. In the deep sea trenches, there are huge blood oysters. These blood oysters are fierce beasts and can swallow a shark. The blood oysters will absorb the frost metal dust in the ocean and merge it within itself to form a metallic pearl called a frost metal blood ball. A frost metal blood ball the size of a fist weighs more than a hundred pounds and can be used to make weapons and other magical objects. It's worth a fortune. Look at those frost metal blood balls. A rune has been engraved on each of them. Using the array's power, the frost metal blood balls can fly in the air at extreme speeds. If one hits your body, it will cause a serious injury. If you are unlucky, you can even die. With Lu Big Ear's introduction, Yi Yun looked wistfully at the dozen frost metal blood balls. There were rumors that under a full moon, a giant oyster will float on the sea surface, and borrowing the moonlight to temper its body, would condense a pearl. This was the so-called bright moon over the sea shedding tears. This pearl was an amalgamation of the giant oyster's essence. If it was picked and brewed with herbs, drinking it down would be great for one's body. Yi Yun did not expect that the Jean Longway camp used such a treasured pearl in an array to test a person's movement skills. Looking at the empty grounds heptagon array, Yi Yun understood the principles of the array. A warrior would stand on the empty ground and attempt to avoid the attacks of the frost metal blood balls. Whoever had better movement speeds would avoid them better. A thunder sky drum and a frost metal blood balls array were tests that covered the two basic aspects of a warrior. Just from this, it could be seen that the Jean Longway's camp had a great heritage. Both the thunder sky drum and the frost metal blood balls array were extremely expensive. In the cloud wilderness, they would have been labeled treasures. Chapter 145 Start the Array As Yi Yun was deep in thought, he saw a young man wearing red stand within the heptagon array. This young man was about 14 years old and he was luxuriously dressed, apparently not of ordinary birth. Start the array, I'll try my moves. The youth was extremely confident. Frost Metal Blood Balls Array, begin it at 10 levels of difficulty. As the youth said those words, a few other youths beside him laughed, ha ha, young master Ji Chun has great bravery, to begin right away with 10 levels of difficulty. This frost metal blood balls array is dangerous, if you are not careful, you can break your bones. As they said, they lit up the array. Beside the heptagon ground was a stone platform. Within the stone platform, there were rows of red crystals. The crystal's red color deepened along the row and the highest crystal was blood red. There were three rows of crystals, with ten crystals forming a row, resulting in a total of thirty crystals. The group of people lit up ten red crystals, which was also known as difficulty level ten. This tenth level of difficulty tested a warrior's reaction to the attacks by ten of these frost metal blood balls. This young master Ji Chan was just 14 years of age, as expected of the saying, heroes come from youngsters. Once the array was turned on, the frost metal blood balls immediately began flying at extreme speeds. Each blood pearl left behind a faint reddish blur. They moved so fast, forming random lines and they were dazzling to behold. The youth took a deep breath and rushed in. The youth tossed and turned within the array like an agile leopard. The ten blood pearls did not even manage to touch his sleeves. After the array was lit up for fifteen minutes, it slowly weakened. The redshirt youth walked out unharmed from the array. His face was slightly red and clearly, he still had a lot of remaining strength. Young Master Ji Chang is so strong, as expected of the Jing State Sunan examination's third place. Of course. The southern examination was filled with powerhouses. For young Master Ji Chan to rank third would make him different. If I must say, young Master Ji Chan should be made a kingdom knight. The few Jing state young masters echoed one another and praised each other. They were the young masters of from the state of Jing, so complimenting each other was a matter of course. These young masters were 13 to 15 years of age. 
Few children of large family clans would join the gene long way above the age of 15. It could be said they were in the prime of their youth, bright and valiant. It was the period they thought they were the center of the world. I say, the few of you, do you want to try? The few young masters looked towards some youths nearby. These youths had rough skin. They wore clothes made out of animal fur and were stout. From the beginning to end, they had never opened their mouths and had been silent in the corner. They had a weak presence. They were much older. Even the youngest was 17 years old. Several of them were over 20 years of age. Clearly, they were warriors from the vast wilderness. The warriors of the vast wilderness lacked resources. Hence, their cultivation speed could not compete with the speed of the young masters from the Jing state's large family clans. Furthermore, since the Taiya Divine Kingdom almost never held the kingdom's selection in the vast wilderness, many of these sons of the vast wilderness could only join the Jin Long Way above the age of 16. For example, who yet entered the Jin Long Way at 18 years of age? For a warrior, being younger was an advantage. With everyone being at the same level and equal strength, a 14-year-old could naturally despise an 18-year-old. The warriors of the vast wilderness had already arrived in the Jin Long Way camp a few days ago. In these few days, they had been ostracized by the Jing state young masters. These highborn young masters naturally formed a faction also known as the Jing state young masters faction. They were large in numbers and powerful. Naturally, the Jin Long Way members that came from the vast wilderness were in an inferior position. When choosing the barracks, the Jing State Young Masters faction occupied the best spots in the barracks, and the sons of the vast wilderness had to occupy the corners. When the bone relics were distributed, the Jing State Young Masters faction received the majority, while they received the least. Including during the meals at the canteen, the Jing State Young Masters faction would pick all the expensive beast meat with greater energy, leaving the low-quality meat to them. During their visit to General Yen, the Jing State Young Masters faction immediately surrounded the Thunder Sky Drum and the Frost Metal Blood Balls and entered the array to train and spar, while the Sons of the Wilderness were ostracized to the side. Actually, seeing the Jing State Young Masters faction's strength, these Sons of the Vast Wilderness had to acknowledge their strength, but it didn't mean they were afraid of them. The Sons of the Vast Wilderness had a wildness within them. They grew up in the harsh environment of the vast wilderness, so they did not easily admit defeat. Seeing that they had been provocated, how could they bear it any further? A tanned youth stood forward. He was about 17 years old and was lean. His glances were like bolts of lightning. He gave of the feeling of a wolf that came from the vast wilderness. My name is Haisha from the Black Rock Tribal Clan. If you want to challenge me, I'll take you on. He he. Challenge? The few young masters smiled upon hearing those words. We aren't challenging you. You don't have the qualification to make us challenge you. It's all a game. The Jing State Young Masters faction's arrogant words made Haisha pop a vein on his forehead. Game. All right, I'll play with you. It was not a spur-of-the-moment decision for Haisha to go on stage. Within the Black Rock tribal clan, he may not be the strongest, but he was the fastest. In the Black Rock tribal clan, he had the nickname of Black Lightning. If it was to beat the Thunder Sky Drum, he might not be able to, but he was full of confidence with the Frost Metal Blood Balls array. Come on up! Young Master Ji Chang said as he saw loathing in Haisha's eyes. Let's do it together, so that it will be most fair. Saying that, young master Ji Chang glanced at Yi Yun from the corner of his eyes. This glance was not obvious, but Yi Yun was sharp, so he sensed it. Yi Yun suddenly understood that this young master Ji Chang was unconvinced of his status as a kingdom knight from the vast wilderness, hence he imposed on those sons of the vast wilderness. The Taiya Divine Kingdom gave great importance to stature. Although he was from the vast wilderness, Yi Yun, as a kingdom knight had much higher stature than the young master Ji Chang from a large family clan. Whether it was young master Ji Chang or the other Jing state young masters, none of them could provoke Yi Yun publicly. 
If they came into conflict and came to blows, an inquiry would prove they were insubordinate, giving them trouble. Hence, they did not dare to flaunt in front of the Yun, but they were indignant. Hence, they attacked the vast wilderness warriors, trying to gain an upper hand against vast wilderness warriors. These were their thoughts. How could the Jing State Young Masters faction, celebrities that came from large family clans be oppressed by a bunch of savages from the vast wilderness? After experiencing fierce battles, they still did not obtain the title of Kingdom Knight. What made Yi Yun special? If I were to say, 10 levels of difficulty is too boring, what do you think? Just as Haisha and young master Jichang stood in the center of the array, young master Jichang suddenly said. Haisha raised his eyebrows. He suddenly realized that young master Jichang did not go his all previously. He still had more to spare. By first appearing weak to prevent the opponent from shying away, then luring him into battle before raising the difficulty was a way to defeat the opponent in one swoop. Haisha immediately understood Jichang's thoughts. Indeed, the moment he stood in that array, there was no way to back down. Even if Ji Chang had made the difficulty even higher, he had to accept it. A simple trick to appear weak before forcing him into a dead end. Although this trick was simple, don't forget that Ji Chang was a 14-year-old child, yet he was so scheming. These young masters from large family clans were not simple folk. Haishit took a deep breath of air as his wizened face flashed a battle spirit. Ji Chang still had more to spare, but he was still pretty confident of his movement ability. All right, we shall battle it out in this array. Eleven levels of difficulty begin. Young Master Ji Chang casually waved. One of the Jing State Young Masters faction's members was by the control panel of the array. He laughed, Young Master Ji Chang, tell me if it's not difficult enough, I'll add more for you. Saying that, he pressed the eleventh crystal. Shu. 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 Eleven frost metal blood balls began whistling through the sky. The eleventh difficulty had one additional frost metal blood balls than the tenth difficulty, and they were even faster now. The extreme speeds made the frost metal blood balls emitted a sharp whistling sound. Ji Chang and Haisha began moving at the same time. Both of them were extremely fast, leaving behind shadows. It was hard for people to distinguish shadow from person. Yiyun watched Ji Chang and Haisha by the side. Their every move could be seen clearly by Yiyun. It was as if they were moving slowly in his eyes. To be able to make it to the Jin Longwei elite, they sure aren't simple. Beside Yiyun was Huya who spoke. On this journey, he had said very few words. Yiyun nodded, yes, this Haisha's speed is very fast and is actually a little faster than Ji Chang. This should be his talent. Unfortunately, Haisha makes a lot of unnecessary moves. Hence, his evasive actions has perhaps less than 40% efficiency. As for Ji Chang's evasive efficiency, it's as high as 60 to 70%. This great difference cannot be made up for with a slight improvement in speed. As Yi Yun said that, Ji Chang suddenly shouted, add more, 12 level of difficulty. Under the high-speed evasion, young master Ji Chang could still distract himself and speak. He laughed arrogantly. All right. The man by the array's control panel made a nefarious smile before pressing the twelfth crystal. Twelve levels of difficulty. The frost metal blood ball's whistling sound became higher in frequency. Together with one additional frost metal blood ball, Ji Chang and Haisha were under great pressure. Sweat began to appear on Haisha's forehead. At this time, a stout middle-aged man appeared by the square's entrance. With a smile on his face, he noted with interest of the scene within the frost metal blood ball's array. Chapter 146 Unwillingness and Persistence This middle-aged man wore a red robe. Beside him was a 14-year-old youth. This youth was wearing a flying fish robe and had a yinchi saber by his waist. His outfit was the same as Yi Yun. This meant that this youth was also a kingdom knight. Oh! General Yen! Zheng Tan noticed the middle-aged man and stumbled. 
He was about to call the personnel to attention when the stout man raised his hand, motioning Zhang Tan not to announce it. Zheng Tan could only nod as the middle-aged man carried on watching the match between Hai Shet and Ji Chang. At this moment, Sha! With a swish, a frost metal blood ball had brushed past Hai Sha's arm. With a ear-piercing sound of torn cloth, a piece of animal skin flew up. The wind from the ball's rotation had ripped off Haisha's sleeve. The piece of animal skin was completely shredded in the air while Haisha's dark arm began to ooze blood. A simple brush gave this result. The power of the frost metal blood balls were understandably strong. The middle-aged man frowned slightly. He gently shook his head, feeling sorry for Haisha. Yi Yun saw that and frowned slightly, Haisha will not beat Ji Chang. If he persists on, he will definitely get injured. The earlier he admits defeat, the better. In fact, it was clear who was better. Haisha may have a better base, but his techniques were greatly inferior to Ji Chang. There was no meaning to compete any further. Yi Yun even suspected that Ji Chang could handle the 13th level of difficulty. It was apparent Haisha could not hold out much longer, and after a while, he was hit by the frost metal blood ball. Usually when a warrior in the frost metal blood ball's array realizes he cannot handle it anymore, he would shout for it to stop. To persist any further would result in paying a very heavy price. To simulate real-life combat and the life-and-death battles, the Jean Longway made the attack power of the blood pearls very high. Being hit once would result in serious injury. There were even cases of training in the Jean Long Way where a soldier had died in the frost metal blood balls array due to bad luck. By persisting even with his injury, Haisha was equivalent to dancing on the tip of a blade. Any mishap could result in him being hit by the frost metal blood balls in weak spots like the head or eyes. The consequences would be disastrous. Sha! With another swish, a second frost metal blood ball brushed past Haisha's shoulder tearing the animal skin. This hit was more serious as the frost metal blood ball changed direction due to the contact. Haisha's shoulder immediately split open. The sons of the vast wilderness familiar with Haisha looked with tearful eyes. Brother Haisha. These youths and men were not young. Seeing Haisha in such a predicament, they clenched their fists so excessively till they shook. With two injures, Haisha persisted by gritting his teeth and enduring the pain. He still summoned all his spirit to dodge the attacks of the frost metal blood balls. He did not want to admit defeat. Men that left the vast wilderness could be defeated in battle or die in battle, but they could not admit defeat. To reach this stage, he had consumed too much resources of the Black Rock tribal clan. His tribe had saved bits and pieces of food allowing them to exchange for resources to let him grow. He had left the vast wilderness and entered the Jean Long Way. He was burdened with the hope of numerous people of the Black Rock Tribal Clan. He wanted to make great contributions, allowing the Black Rock Tribal Clan folks to lead a better life. How could he just give up here? To say, I admit defeat and jump out of the array was simple, but he had his own principles. Ever since he left the vast wilderness, he had been despised, looked down upon and suppressed. And now, this was a battle where he could prove himself. He may have lost in terms of strength, but he could not lose in terms of courage. If not, how would he have the qualifications to compete with those children of the large family clans? The warriors of the vast wilderness were extremely agitated. Their first foray into the central plains was like a child coming into the city from a rural village. They brought with them ignorance, hesitation, their tribe's hope, the dreams of making a triumphant return. They stood alone with little power against the rich young masters who had family backgrounds and abilities far greater than them. Haisha's persistence stirred the hearts of empathy among the sons of the vast wilderness. However, the array was cruel. It would not change due to the wishes of people. Sha! Haisha's other arm was scratched too. At this point, Haisha had three wounds. Ji Chang smiled coldly as he knew Haisha was at his limit. Sha! The fourth wound. 
At this moment, the whistling sounds of the frost metal blood balls, the laughters of the young master faction, the anticipation of the sons of the vast wilderness, disappeared. Haisha vomited a mouthful of fresh blood and his body flew out. The fifth frost metal blood ball had ripped the muscles in his chest, breaking his ribs and was embedded within his chest. The frost metal blood balls would reduce its speed upon hitting a person's body. But this did not prevent the serious injury of rib fractures. This was the cruelty of the gene long way training. At the moment he flew out, Haisha had instinctively covered his head with his arms. A frost metal blood ball had shot Haisha's thigh, nearly piercing it. In the Jean Longway's camp, there were numerous injuries in the recruits, including a 2-3% mortality rate. Stop! Lou Big Ear shouted and the array immediately stopped. A few doctors immediately rushed over to treat Haisha. Haisha's injuries were serious. Even with high-grade medicines, he would still need to lay in bed for four to five days. Ji Chang glanced at Haisha as his mouth formed an arc. He circulated the qi within his body, evaporating the sweat on his forehead immediately. He rubbed his wrists saying, there's still some speed to spare. Too bad you lack the technique. But this isn't your fault. There is little heritage in the vast wilderness, and you can't learn many techniques. So most of the time, you are competing with strength and brute force. If you were to fight with similar savages, you would naturally be at an advantage, but when you meet someone with martial arts skills, then you won't be able to hold out. Ji Chang gave a few pointers. Upon hearing this, the Jing State Young Masters faction began applauding, Young Master Ji Chang's pointers hit the nail on the head. Indeed, Haisha lost to technique. But in the vast wilderness, there aren't many techniques. The Jing State Young Masters faction echoed. Any sons of the vast wilderness willing to come up? As Ji Chang asked, his eyes swept with mixed intentions towards Yi Yun. Indeed, Yi Yun was his final target. So what if he had stepped over Haisha? Yi Yun was a kingdom knight. By stepping over a kingdom knight, it would be a relief. What made you a kingdom knight and not me? My strength is greater than yours, and I'll purposely hit you in the face. Not only Ji Chang was looking at Yi Yun, many of the sons of the vast wilderness were looking at Yi Yun. However, unlike Ji Chang's provocation, these sons of the vast wilderness looked at Yi Yun with a form of anticipation. They had all lost. Even the fastest, Haisha, had lost to Ji Chang, so they wouldn't do. Their only hope was Yi Yun who had came out of the vast wilderness like them. Him being a kingdom knight meant that he was no ordinary person. Haisha had multiple injuries in his chest, leading to severe blood loss. However, even as he was gasping for breath on the stretcher, Haisha still looked up at Yi Yun with great difficulty. Yi Yun looked calmly at Haisha in the eye. Although he did not know Haisha and had never spoken a word with him, Yi Yun felt he had to do something for him. This was the respect a warrior deserved. After all, Yi Yun had come out from the vast wilderness. He may not have a strong sense of belonging with the vast wilderness, but he did share the same homology as these sons of the vast wilderness. He could see the resilience and suffering of the people of the vast wilderness. Just like Zhang Shoro who persisted on. Maybe one day, they would not suffer from low self-esteem due to their vast wilderness background, but use it as a form of honor. With this in mind, Yi Yun walked towards the array. I shall compete with you. Yi Yun said lightly. Ji Chang was overjoyed. He laughed loudly, to compete with a kingdom knight is a great honor. The Jing State Young Masters faction were excited. They could finally see how great a so-called vast wilderness kingdom knight could be. Stepping over a kingdom knight would definitely feel good. Don't you need to rest? Young Mastery asked Young Master Ji Chang. Thank you, Kingdom Knight, for worrying about me. But it was just to warm up, so I don't need to rest. As for you, do you need to warm up? Ji Chang exuded extreme confidence in his words. It was tit for tat between the two. Interesting. At this time, Yen Menglong suddenly laughed. 
None of the Jean Longway recruits had recognized him ever since he came. If so, Ji Chang would not have dared to continue clamoring. Hearing this voice, Ji Chang stumbled. Noticing Yen Menglong's dressing, he immediately realized the identity of Yen Menglong. He quickly responded by cupping his fists, Little me is Ji Chang, greeting General Yen. May the general forgive me for Little Me's public rashness. In front of Yen Menglong, Ji Chang maintained propriety without being servile or bumptious. Yen Menglong laughed, being young and rash, and being contentious might not be a bad thing. I do wish that my army has absolute obedience in the battlefield, but to not show obedience to anyone during training. Battling is a good thing. Since you are competing today, I'll add some flair to it. Anyone can compete in this match. Whoever finishes with first place by suppressing everyone will be allowed to the enter the Divine Capital's top grade armory and choose two weapons. Whatever you like can be taken away. In addition, I'll give two desolate bone relics. After Yen Menglong said those words, the young warriors present immediately lit up. To enter the Divine Capital's top grade armory and choose two weapons? And two desolate bone relics? The Divine Capital's top grade armory was an extremely high level armory that was filled with weapons made with excellent workmanship. They were made with valuable materials and inscribed with arrays on them, making them priceless. Even the teenager beside General Yen seemed interested. Many people noticed the teenager. He had came in together with General Yen and wore a flying fish robe. It meant he was a kingdom knight, making his stature extraordinary. Weapons Desolate Bone Relic In the array, Yi Yin gently clasped his fists. This was a great surprise. He was lacking a weapon. The Yin Qi Saber was a standard weapon of the Jin Long Wei. Hence, in terms of quality and other aspects, it was not excellent. Chapter 147 Youths Have to Be Unrestrained in front of Yi Yun, young master Ji Chang had greater fighting spirit. Ji Chang thought so as well. Start the array. What does the Lord Kingdom Knight think about 12 levels of difficulty? Although his speech was respectful, the way young master Ji Chang looked at Yi Yun was full of provocation. The natives of the vast wilderness were poor in technique, so even though this Adonis, Yi Yun might have great physical attributes resulting in his conferment as Kingdom Knight, so what? All right, 12 levels of difficulty. Yi Yun did not care. This difficulty was nothing to him. A young master of the Jing State Young Master's faction grinned before pressing the twelfth crystal. Immediately, the sons of the vast wilderness held their breaths as they looked at Yi Yun with worry and anticipation. Twang! Twelve frost metal blood balls roared and assailed Yi Yun and Ji Chang like meteors. Ji Chang's eyes burned with fighting spirit. He began moving, leaving a series of shadows as he tossed haphazardly around in the air with extreme agility. None of the twelve flying crystals touched Ji Chang's shirt. Ji Chang's movements were dazzling and one could hardly see his body. In contrast, Yi Yun made very little movements. From the beginning to the end, he had hardly moved and stood in place. Beat after beat of the frost metal blood balls flew over but Yi Yun either raised his arms, twisted or moved his legs. His body was a blur, forming a series of shadows surrounding his body. It was hard to tell if Yi Yun moved or not within those shadows. The frost metal blood balls would stick close to Yi Yun's body, but would never actually hit him. Even the force wind from the rotation of the frost metal blood balls was calculated appropriately by Yi Yun. Even though the force wind was fast, it could still not tear Yi Yun's flying fish robe. Underneath the flying fish robe, he still wore the flowing mercury gown, which was heavy and limited his actions. No matter how fit Yi Yun was, it was impossible for him to not be affected by the flowing mercury gown. If it was a comparison of speed, he was no match for Ji Chang. All he could do was to push his dodging efficiency to its extreme within the limits of his speed. If Ji Chang's dodging efficiency was at 60 to 70 percent, Yi Yun's would be above 95 percent. Yi Yun just stood there, giving the people the impression that the frost metal blood balls were deliberately avoiding Yi Yun. 
What happened? The sons of the vast wilderness stared dumbfounded and confused. But the Jing State Young Masters faction knew what it meant. Their faces immediately turned ugly. Oh! Minute subtlety? Not far away, Yen Menglong's eyes lit up. Yi Yun's minute subtlety technique had been well honed by him. As Yen Menglong saw it, Yi Yun had reached the introductory stage of minute subtlety and was in the transitory area before the small success stage. For a 12 year old to reach this stage was extremely rare. Is it only the introductory stage? Zheng Tan stroked his chin as he looked strangely at Yi Yun. He had seen Yi Yun's battle with Tao Yunxiao. Tao Yunxiao had used the ancestral artifact's energy and yet he could not touch Yi Yun's sleeves. At that time, Yi Yun's minute subtlety technique was much superior. But today, it seemed like he was holding back. Buzz. The frost metal blood balls flew faster and faster as Ji Chang avoided again and again. Although Ji Chang could handle it, he saw Yi Yun avoiding the attacks without much movement. Ji Chang's face turned ugly and nearly got hit in the head by a frost metal blood ball due to the distraction. He had previously said the vast wilderness warriors were lacking in technique, but Yi Yun's appearance had smacked him in the face. Minute subtlety technique. How could this be possible? Minute subtlety was the highest achievement of a movement skill. To reach this stage, one had to have excellent perceptivity. It was not something that could be trained. Add one more difficulty. Ji Chang shouted. He refused to admit defeat. The Jing State young master manning the array controls pressed the 13th crystal with mixed feelings. Another frost metal blood ball flew up and joined the array. With 13 frost metal blood balls, the speed was even faster. The ear piercing sounds through the air were like scratches on glass. As the beams flew by, it became countless numbers of lines forming a cage that surrounded Yi Yun and Ji Chang. Yi Yun knitted his eyebrows. He was feeling great pressure under difficulty level 13. The flowing mercury gown had a great effect on his speed. Even so Yi Yun did not reduce the binding on the flowing mercury gown. The pressure gave him a driving force, so he wanted to push himself to the limit. He had remembered the words Lin Xintong had said when she gave him the flowing mercury gown. You have reached the small success stage of minute subtlety and still have a long way to go. You have to learn the large success stage of minute subtlety by yourself. If someone were to teach you, it will not be yours. This flowing mercury gown can aid in increasing your strength and help you reach the large success stage of the minute subtlety movement technique. By pushing himself to the limit, Yi Yun realized that if he could reach the small success stage of minute subtlety while wearing the flowing mercury gown, then when he took off the flowing mercury gown, he would probably be at the threshold of the large success stage of minute subtlety. Hence, Yi Yun continued to push himself to the limit. As he could no longer increase his speed any further, Yi Yun had to rely on his dodging effectiveness. He was pushing the efficiency to almost 100%. Oh! His speed isn't good. Ji Chang suddenly realized that Yi Yun's speed was not fast. And due to his speed limitations, it was hard for him to move under difficulty level 13. Even if Yi Yun had great technique, without the support of being fast, he would not be able to pull off a great technique. I see, this kid isn't invincible. His technique may be good, but his speed is slow. How could there be such a freak from the vast wilderness? Oomph. Since you are slow, then my limit is probably not worse than you. Upon realizing this, Ji Chang renewed his fighting spirit. Difficulty level 13 was already Ji Chang's limit. It would be dangerous if he added more. Difficulty level 14 was not to be taken in jest. It was a serious injury upon being hit by the frost metal blood ball. My body speed is fast. At difficulty level 14, I should be able to hold on briefly. I won't lose to him. Ji Chang clenched his fist. He could not lose. He had said so much previously, so how could he lose? The young masters of the Jing state had their pride. 
Besides, General Yen had promised rewards. Add one more level. While constantly dodging, Ji Chang said with difficulty. Upon hearing that, the young master in charge of manning the array's controls missed a heartbeat. After some hesitation, he pressed the 14th crystal. Wah! Yet another blood pearl flew up. The immense speed had caused a whirlwind within the square. Under the shroud of the forceful wind, Yi Yun knitted his eyebrows as his palms began to sweat. Pressure. He felt pressure once again. He felt he was on the verge of his limits, and it seemed like he would be hit by the frost metal blood balls any time. In the midst of the beams, Yi Yun closed his eyes. With his eyes closed, what happened in his surroundings became clearer. Yi Yun used his body to feel the frost metal blood balls trajectories, letting his body to make the instinctive reactions. This increased his dodging efficiency. Oh! Closing the eyes to feel the frost metal blood balls forced to dodge. This kid can actually do that? This is already the small success stage of minute subtlety. Upon seeing Yi Yun dare to close his eyes, Yen Menglong grew intrigued. He knew a little about Yi Yun. Zhang Tan you said this kid induced purple air comes from the east, and I thought it was just by chance. But it looks like his perceptivity is much higher than others. This title of the Kingdom Knight was well conferred. Yen Menglong was not stingy with his praise. Zhang Tan smiled and was indescribably happy. He felt proud from Yen Menglong's praise of a soldier he selected. Yen Menglong looked at the youth in the flying fish robe and asked, Zijuan, what do you think of Yi Yun? This youth was named Zijuan and was born with bright eyes and white teeth. He said, for him to reach this stage from the vast wilderness, it's indeed not bad. As for minute subtlety, I know it too. And my speed is much faster than his. Being Kingdom Knight as well, he was young and aspirant, hence Zijuan would not easily accept anyone. Yen Menglong laughed heartily. He liked Zijuan's character. Youths have to be unrestrained. Youths would naturally not accept anyone. Only then would Yen Menglong feel the vibrancy. What Yen Menglong needed was an army filled with vibrancy and self-improvement. At this time, Ji Chang had reached his limits in the array. He really wanted to give up. A frost metal blood ball had previously chafed at his sleeve. Seeing Yi Yun's forehead sweating, it seemed like in the next second he would be hit by the frost metal blood balls. He did not want to fall short of success at the last stage, hence he gritted his teeth and persisted on. Just a little while and I'll win. I want to be a king, how can I give up halfway? I do not need to complete difficulty level 14. All I need is to last longer than him. His speed is slow and he is using a technique to avoid. He won't be able to do it perfectly every time. Eventually, he will make a mistake. Ji Chang kept convincing himself to boost his confidence. But every time Yi Yun seemed to be trapped in an unavoidable outcome, he would come out unharmed. It was like a hair holding up a rock, although it seemed like the hair was about to break, it wouldn't break. Ji Chang was going crazy. Sha! As Ji Chang grew more upset and near his limits, a frost metal blood ball grazed Ji Chang's thigh. Pua! Blood splattered as a piece of flesh on Ji Chang's thigh was ripped off. Ji Chang snorted and with his body unsteady, another frost metal blood ball was heading straight for his sternum. And Ji Chang could no longer avoid this attack. His pupils contracted as he crossed his arms to block it. Ka Cha! Ji Chang's body flew out. His right arm, which blocked the frost metal blood ball, had been broken. At this moment, another frost metal blood ball shot towards Ji Chang's stomach. Even though Ji Chang tightened his abs, it still pierced through his skin into his gut. With continued hits, Ji Chang vomited out blood as he fell heavily to the ground. Chapter 148 Young Master Zijuan Seeing Ji Chang become seriously injured by the frost metal blood balls, the Jing State Young Masters faction were dumbfounded. A pretty boy that came out of the vast wilderness had actually defeated young master Ji Chang. 
Although they ridiculed Lee Yoon as a pretty boy, weren't they worse than a pretty boy? They ridiculed the people of the vast wilderness for not knowing any techniques and for only having brute force. But Lee Yun's minute subtlety smacked their faces swollen. Stop the array, the Jing State Young Masters faction shouted. One of the young masters hurriedly stopped the array. Yi Yun, who was completely immersed in his own world, only realized after the array had stopped. Opening his eyes, he saw that Chi Chang had already flown out. It ended? Such a pity. I just had some insight, and then it was gone. Although Yi Yun was not angry that he had been interrupted, he found that the Frost Metal Blood Balls array was extremely suitable for training his movement techniques. Together with the flowing mercury gown, Yi Yun believed that it would not take long for him to reach the large success stage of minute subtlety. With the flowing mercury gown, I'll push myself to the limit. Whether my movement technique or other aspects will increase extremely quickly, as Yi Yun thought about this, he saw a few Jing State young masters rushing to Ji Chang. Young Master Ji Chang. Are you all right? Ji Chang was covered in blood. There was a large hole in his abdomen. Although he originally had appealing looks, he was now white as paper and looked horrendous. Being hurt like this, especially in the arms, it would take at least half a month to recover. This kid, Ji Chang had not fainted. He was flustered having been defeated by Yi Yun. He no longer used honorifics while referring to Yi Yun. He did not understand why although Yi Yun looked like he was unable to endure further and was having a tougher time than him, yet, he had lost to Yi Yun in the end. It was not worth being this seriously injured. To not be able to train for half a month, and coupled with the proper care for his wounds to prevent future problems, this injury could even affect Ji Chang's future breakthroughs. Ji Chang was depressed. He had lost the match and his face. He had been stepped on by a kid from the vast wilderness. Ha ha ha. Yen Menglong laughed, well done. Yi Yun, you are deserving of the title of Kingdom Knight. You men of the vast wilderness are also great men. Yen Menglong praised the sons of the vast wilderness. Receiving this compliment, the sons of the vast wilderness were nearly moved to tears. They had come from backward places and needed the approval of others, especially from General Yen, the leader of the Divine Capital's Jin Long Wei. Although this approval was won by Yi Yun, they too felt proud and elated. Brother Yi. Good for you. Brother Yi. In the future, we will all follow you. Although we don't have many abilities, we have some strength, please accept it. A few sons of the vast wilderness said to Yi Yun. Yi Yun could see genuineness within their eyes. Yen Menglong carried on, Yi Yun. It's pretty good that you won this match. But, to receive the weapons and the bone relics, you still need to do more. What I want is the number one among everyone. While saying this, Yen Menglong looked towards Zijuan. He knew that even without incentives, Zijuan would still compete with Yi Yun on stage. This was Zijuan's character. He would burn with fighting spirit when he faced an expert, especially an expert at his own age. He was unable to suppress his urge. It was a great pleasure of life to fight someone who was your match. Sure enough, Zijuan walked out. Many people had noticed his flying fish robe earlier. I'm Song Zijuan and come from the Song family from the Jing state. I did not go through the kingdom's selection. I was sent directly to the Jin Long Way for training, so... I am still not familiar with most of you. This is our first time meeting. Song Zijuan introduced himself humbly. Yi Yun understood that he was parachuted in by his family. Those whose strength had not been acknowledged had to take the exam but those were strong could be directly parachuted in. Even some sons of the large family clans did not need to enter the Jin Long Way. They actually had many choices. Some entered the Jin Long Way due to the military environment. In the military, there was plenty of strict training and life and death battles. These were greatly valued by the family clan's leaders. So he is Song Zijuan. 
The Song family's young master Zijuan. He is a famous young master in the Sunan city. He is also the top expert among the younger generation in the Song family. So he has been conferred the title of Kingdom Knight. There are two Kingdom Knights in the recruit training camp in the Divine Capital. It would not be surprising that the two of them will be made thousand households soon. The competition between two Kingdom Knights is greatly anticipated. Brother E, we're counting on you. The sons of the vast wilderness constantly cheered on Yun, hoping Yun would win his next match. As for the Jing State Young Masters faction, they naturally biased towards Song Zijuan. Song Zijuan's fame was far beyond Jichang's. As for Yun, to the Jing State Young Masters faction, he had narrowly defeated Jichang. Although he was stronger by a tiny amount, compared to Song Zijuan, there was a huge gap. This bunch of bumpkins from the vast wilderness actually think it will be an exciting match between Yi Yun and young master Zijuan? Although I don't really want to admit it, young master Zijuan's strength is much higher than us. Nobody here is his match. One's fame could not be from a virtual scholar. The Jing State Young Masters faction were full of anticipation with Song Zijuan's outcome. They could show the vast wilderness warriors the true strength of the Jing State Young Masters this time. Song Zijuan walked into the array and faced Yi Yun. Both of them were dressed in flying fish robe. Both them had great heroic bearing. It was a battle between dragons. Yi Yun, right? I'm Song Zijuan. My life's greatest wish is to face all experts in the world and compete for the top. I'm older than you, so it's actually unfair to compete with you. Song Zijuan's words were friendly and elegant. He indeed exuded the feeling of a refined young master. But, since General Yen has promised a reward, I have to beat you under such circumstances. Oh? You think you are going to win? Yi Yun calmed his breathing as the sweat drops on his forehead evaporated. I will win. Song Zijuan said firmly. I will enter the array first and won't compete with you on the same stage, to prevent you from feeling uncomfortable with my rhythm and getting hit by the frost metal blood balls. And, you exerted yourself a lot a while ago, so you can take the chance to rest. So imposing, the sons of the vast wilderness looked at each other. But then, although Song Zijuan was imposing, he did not give off an irritating feeling. Song Zijuan stood at the center of the array. Yi Yun did not insist and stepped out of the array. He had tried to gain an understanding of the large success stage of minute subtlety previously and had really consumed a lot of energy. Let's begin with difficulty level 14. Song Zijuan lightly said. To challenge difficulty level 14 immediately with complete confidence showed that he did not think highly of this difficulty. These words made those sons of the vast wilderness supporting Yi Yun thump in the heart. Yi Yun was having difficulty at difficulty level 14 previously. But it seemed like difficulty level 14 was just a beginning step for Song Zijuan. Song Zijuan undid his Yin Qi saber and placed it outside the array. He calmly said, Start the array. All right. The young master controlling the array smiled excitedly and pressed the 14th crystal. Chapter 149, Half Footsteps The heptagon array beneath Song Zijuan's feet began to light up. Fourteen blood pearls began to softly buzz. Phew! The blood pearls headed straight for Song Zijuan with an ear-piercing sound. Song Zijuan looked at those blood pearls and his body moved, creating a series of shadows. These shadows were layered. Under protection of those shadows, Song Zijuan stood with his feet apart and did not move one step. He was dodging on the same spot. All the blood pearls were easily dodged by Song Zijuan. Minute Subtlety The Jing State Young Masters faction could not help but cheer when they saw Song Zijuan's movements. With his fame, how could young master Zijuan not know Minute Subtlety? It's so easy dodging 14 levels of difficulty in the Frost Metal Blood Balls array. And they could tell that Song Zijuan's speed was even faster, much faster than even Haisha's. 
With his speed exceeding Haisha's and his technique overshadowing Yun's, Song Zijuan could only be described as perfect. With the support of both technique and speed, Song Zijuan moved fluidly within the frost metal blood balls array. The Jing State young masters bemoaned their inadequacy upon seeing Song Zijuan's movements. There was no limit in the universe. Ji Chang was strong, but compared to Song Zijuan, he was too far off. Add one more difficulty. Fourteen levels of difficulty was just a warm up to Song Zijuan. After he got used to the frost metal blood balls array, Song Zijuan wanted the fifteenth difficulty level. And this difficulty still failed to trouble Song Zijuan. Fifteen levels of difficulty was no simple matter. The fast moving frost metal blood balls had created a small whirlwind in the air. Under the immense pressure, Song Zijuan finally had to move his feet. Even Song Zijuan could not stay on the spot to avoid the frost metal blood balls at 15 levels of difficulty. Song Zijuan's steps were very particular. Every step he made never exceeded one and a half feet. Such a short step was no different than a toddler learning to walk. With such footsteps chained together, it made it hard to tell where Song Zijuan's feet were landing. It's the Song family's secret technique, half footsteps, said a Jing State young master. The advantages of the Jing State's family clans were not only resources, but included heritage. This half footsteps technique was not spread outside the Song family. Old family clans tended to have more or less some family heirloom or cornerstone technique. This was their heritage. Add one more level. Song Zijuan said from within the array. Add another? If another was added, it would be 16 levels of difficulty. Whether it was the Jing State Young Masters or the Sons of the Vast Wilderness, they were full of admiration for Song Zijuan. The young master in charge of the array controls took a deep breath and pressed the 16th crystal. Twang! The frost metal blood balls thundered. Sharp air bursts sent tremors to causing numbness in people's ears. Lines of fire formed into a fire web. At this point, Song Zijuan finally felt some pressure. His movements were still refined, but slowly, he was unable to maintain the harmony. The half footsteps was the Song family's secret technique, but Song Zijuan had not completely grasped it. With his standard, it was tough for him to demonstrate it. It greatly depleted his mental strength and Yuan Qi. Minute subtlety nearing the small success stage, and his speed is fast. To reach the small success stage of the half footsteps at his age, Song Zijuan can be considered the cream of the crop in the Jing state. Yen Menglong gave an accurate evaluation. At this point, Song Zijuan reached his limits. He withdrew from the array. He had ultimately maintained within the array at 16 levels of difficulty for 15 minutes. As for the 17th difficulty level, he did not challenge it. There was a sharp change between the 16th and 17th difficulty level. For Purple Blood Realm warriors, even if they had great accomplishments with minute subtlety, they would not dare to rashly try it. A youth with minute subtlety demonstrating his movement techniques made many warrior burn with agitation especially among the Jing State young masters. Their faces were glowing. Song Zijuan was their idol. Whatever Yi Yun had managed to suppress had been regained to its maximum level. This was the heritage the Jing State family clans had. As the sons of the Jing State family clans, their hearts were filled with pride. They could one day achieve such results. After Song Zijuan was Yi Yun. Everyone's eyes gathered on Yun. 16 levels of difficulty for 15 minutes. The pressure from such a result was too great. After all, 14 levels of difficulty seemed to be Yun's limit when he was competing with Ji Chang. Yun adjusted his breathing and flowed the Yuan Qi within his body to reach his optimum state. It's your turn. Song Zijuan brushed shoulders with Yun when he came down. He looked at Yi Yun with a trace of smile on his lips. Yi Yun calmly looked at Song Zijuan and nodded. His eyes were clear like the stars in the night sky. 
There was a sharp blade within his serenity. Their glances clashed as if there were the sound of clashing swords. E Yun, do you still plan to struggle up there? The result is already clear. If not for young Master Ji Chang's accident stopping the array, E Yun would most likely have been terribly defeated by 14 levels of difficulty. Now young Master Zi Juan has completed 16 levels of difficulty. If E Yun were to carry on with his 14 levels, would it be interesting? The Jing State young master's faces were full of gloating expressions. To them, Song Zijuan had already won. The difference was great. Yi Yun had to go up the stage to protect his pride out of helplessness. The people from the vast wilderness did not speak. They looked at Yi Yun with worry in their eyes. As for Yin Menglong, he rubbed his stubble. His eyes flashed as he looked at Yi Yun with interest. It seems like he had saw something interesting. Yi Yun leaped and shot out like an arrow. In an instant, he had landed within the frost metal blood balls array. He said to the controller of the array, 14 levels of difficulty. 14 levels again. That's so boring. This is his limit. If he had any guts, he would go to level 15 in a while. He he, you want to see Yi Yun suffer, right? Do not worry, there's no need for 15 levels, 14 levels is enough for him to be hit by the frost metal blood balls. The Jing State young masters were waiting to watch the show. They were not waiting to watch Yi Yun's performance, but for him to be hit by the frost metal blood balls, vomiting blood from his injuries and being bedridden for half a month. The array lit up and blood beams shot up. The 14 frost metal blood balls emitted a fierce roar and weaved around in the air with tricky trajectories before shooting towards Yi Yun. Yi Yun was familiar with 14 levels of difficulty, but he still wanted to begin there. He wanted to carry on his understandings while his body was at its peak. He steadied his breath as he closed his eyes. By feeling the force to feel the attacks, he pushed himself closer to his limits. Only then could he dig out his full potential. In a split second, Yi Yun had reached his maximum concentration. It was as if he was the only person left in the world and the force wind around his body. It was the air pushed from the frost metal blood balls through their trajectories. These trajectories slowly became clear within his mind. Yi Yun moved as each blood pearl brushed past his body. Every attack of a frost metal blood ball was barely dodged by Yi Yun. It was his limit and extremely frightening. A few times, he could feel the pain the force wind caused to his skin. After every brush, it was as if his skin would rupture at any time, giving him goosebumps. When the sons of the vast wilderness saw the scene, their hearts nearly stopped. Yi Yun was barely handling it at 14 levels of difficulty. It seemed like likely he would be injured if it went on. Yi Yun's breathing became heavy as he adjusted the flowing mercury gown's weight. It made him go closer to his limit so that the physical exertion would be greater. Drops of sweat rolled down Yi Yun's forehead. Second after second passed by. Very soon, 15 minutes had passed. The Jing State Young Masters faction had waited till their necks ached. They were waiting to see Yi Yun get trounced by the blood pearls. But, every time Yi Yun was about to be hit by the frost metal blood balls, he would always avoid it at the critical juncture. This situation had happened numerous times. As such, Yi Yun had slowly spent 15 minutes in the array. Following that, 30 minutes. The Jing State Young Masters faction waited to the point of disbelief. What's wrong? Hey, at least challenge 15 levels of difficulty. The Jing State Young Masters faction had to admit that Yi Yun could handle 14 levels of difficulty. But even if he could, was he going to stay in there for two hours? They were hoping that Yi Yun's stamina would decline, and slowly he would be unable to handle it. But at this time, as a beam shot passed, Yi Yun took out something and put it into his mouth. Fierce Beast Relic? The Jing State Young Masters were dumbfounded. Eating Bone Relics He's even eating bone relics? Yi Yun was not a god. 
Although the purple crystal could absorb heaven earth yuan chi to replenish his energy, but due to the extreme weight from the flowing mercury gown, it constantly pushed him to his limits, hence depleting him of his energy. As such, he needed to replenish his energy. Isn't this cheating? A few young masters protested, but upon further thinking, there was no rules against eating bone relics. F asterisk asterisk K, if he carries on, he can play in that for two hours and maybe all the way to dinner, the Jing state young masters were speechless. Yi Yin simply turned a deaf ear to the surrounding chatter. He had already immersed himself in his own world. He felt like he could perfectly control every inch of his body muscles and could precisely complete any tiny movement. He felt that the heavy flowing mercury gown's pressure on his body made him expend large amounts of energy with every move. He also had to tax his mind about calculating the trajectories of the frost metal blood balls. Under such conditions, Yi Yun was physically and mentally exhausted. But a sense of joy arose even while he remained exhausted. Minute subtlety. Minute subtlety. Is this the large success stage of minute subtlety? Immersed in extreme pain and pleasure, Yi Yin became more adept at handling the frost metal blood ball's trajectories around him. Chapter 150 Yi Yun's Limit Even as he was drained mentally and physically, Yi Yun was in an otherworldly state, where he made progress bit by bit. The light within Yi Yun's heart grew brighter the longer he endured. It constantly expanded, and all the blurred trajectories that were like slashes in the void slowly became clearer. He even felt that the space in his body was slowly expanding outwards, with the pain his body was experiencing. Yi Yun felt a surge of joy, but at the same time, he knew that he had been pushed to his limits physically. The moment he couldn't keep up physically, he would definitely fall out of that mysterious state. Fortunately, Lin Shintong had left many bone relics for him before leaving. Yi Yun ate another bone relic. The warm energy flowed within his body. Yi Yun's body was wet from sweat. Yi Yun had already lasted within the array for two hours. The Jing State young masters watched till their eyes saw a blur. Yi Yun's movements did not change. They had sillily watched with their necks straightened for two hours to point of throwing up. Is there any meaning to this? Someone protested. But when they looked at the Divine Capital's general, Yen Menglong, he was still stroking his chin and watching Yi Yun with interest. They did not know how the same moves that had lasted so long could be interesting. As the Jing State young masters were about to lose their patience, the young master in charge of controlling the array was falling asleep. But suddenly, they heard something that made them excited. Add, one more level. Yi Yun opened his mouth. He said it with difficulty and his voice was a little hoarse. It gave people the impression that he was nearing his limit. He said those words while dripping in sweat. Making it more difficult? He's finally making it more difficult. The Jing State young masters who were fighting back their heavy eyelids were suddenly refreshed. Great, Yi Yun is finally preparing to challenge the 15 levels of difficulty. The young master in charge of controlling the array licked his lips excitedly as he pressed down on the 15th crystal. You're finished. They polished their eyes, waiting to see Yi Yun get hit by the frost metal blood balls and suffering serious injuries. Wah! The frost metal blood balls roared. Due to the high speed friction in the air for two hours, each blood pearl was glowing red from the heat. The damage done from such blood pearls was imaginable. Song Zijuan's face had a tinge of puzzlement and anticipation. He wanted to see what Yi Yun's limit was. Suddenly, Song Zijuan's pupils constricted. He noticed that in the middle of the array, there was a weird change in Yi Yun's movements. Yi Yun's movements had been slow and were made with great difficulty. It seemed like he was about to be hit by the frost metal blood balls at any time. But suddenly, Yi Yun's movements suddenly became fast again. It was like his body had dumped a pile of weight causing his body to suddenly explode with frightening strength and agility. Shadows appeared around his body and the array seemed to be filled with the young shadow. He had reduced the flowing mercury gown's weight to the lowest. 
Suddenly, Eun's movements were faster by at least 30%. Shoo. 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 Eun avoided all 15 blood pearls. The blood pearls reversed and shot back. Eun tapped his toes and avoided them again. His movements were fluid. Compared to the 14 levels of difficulty, his movements were more harmonious and relaxed. Not a single blood pearl could touch Eun's sleeves. What? The people were stunned. How did Eun suddenly increase his speed? The Jing State young masters were in disbelief. Even the sons of the vast wilderness were confused. Was Yi Yun withholding his strength previously? But it didn't seem so. Every action of his looked like he was at his limits. The sweat and the vein that appeared on his forehead was proof. Interesting. Yen Menglong, who had been watching Yi Yun with interest, suddenly laughed. Within the array, Yi Yun's eyes flashed with a strange excitement. His body was still covered in sweat, but his body was much more relaxed. The restraint on his body had been reduced significantly. By reducing the flowing mercury gown's weight, it undoubtedly allowed Eun's suppressed body potential to burst out. It was just nice to tackle 15 levels of difficulty. Hum hum hum. The frost metal blood balls howled in the air as it formed tearing winds that could be seen with the naked eye. The fierce wind raged everywhere. And Yi Yun was like a sea swallow shuttling through easily across a rough storm. The people watching it turned dumbstruck. This wasn't going according to script. Wasn't Yi Yun supposed to get seriously injured after being hit by the blood pearls at 15 levels of difficulty? The Jing State young masters could not comprehend. If they did not see the frost metal blood ball's speed increase with their own eyes, they would have thought that the array had malfunctioned. At this time, Yi Yun said another set of words that made all of them drop their jaws. At another level, 16 levels of difficulty. Yi Yun's voice was not loud. It was not clear amidst the blood pearls screeching across the air. But it still entered their ears, stunning them greatly. They were all speechless. Is he mad? I'll cordon your craziness and let you swagger. I'll make you know the power of 16 levels of difficulty. Do you really think you are on par with young master Zijuan? The young master, controlling the array, fiercely pressed the 16th crystal. Suddenly, the entire array was covered in flashes. The 16 frost metal blood balls shot wantonly. The surrounding crowd couldn't help but take a few steps back. 16 levels of difficulty put tremendous pressure on Eun. Every frost metal blood ball was like a shooting star. It put immense pressure on Eun's body and mind. These frost metal blood balls would collide with one another now and then, making them fly helter skelter, catching people off guard. The frost metal blood balls constantly reduced Eun's maneuver space. Buzz. Eun's ears were humming as his heartbeat rate increased. His blood was flowing at an extreme speed. Cha! A blood pearl brushed past Eun's waist. His flying fish robe had been ripped open. Sixteen levels of difficulty was clearly above Eun's limit. Ha! The Jing State young masters exhaled. Finally, this kid could no longer hold on. They did not expect Eun had held back and underestimated him. But, he was still inferior to young master Zijuan. Sha! Another beam flashed by as Eun's flying fish robe sleeve was torn apart. A strand of blood flew out as Eun's arm had been injured. Under 16 levels of difficulty, the frost metal blood ball speed was too fast. The fierce force wind tore the flying fish robe as easy as tearing paper. Seeing a few frost metal blood balls flying towards Eun with no dead spots, it would be difficult for Eun to escape it. At that instant, Eun dodged and jumped out of the array. Pa! 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 The blood pearls hit the empty space he left behind. Ha! Seeing Eun leave the array, the Jing State young masters were disappointed. This kid is too cunning. 
They had wished to see Ian beaten to a pulp, but since he had given up, there was nothing left for them to see. Brother E. Good for you. The sons of the vast wilderness cheered. Although Yun had only managed to last 10 seconds at 16 levels of difficulty and had clearly lost to Song Zijuan, to reach this stage was applaudable. A youth that came from the vast wilderness had suppressed a group of young masters that came from large family clans, and he was not much weaker than their number one young master. It was something to be proud of. Today, the sons of the vast wilderness had proved themselves and proved the glory of the vast wilderness. Brother Zhang, you sure selected a good seedling. Lu Bigier patted Zhang Tan's shoulders as he said from the bottom of his heart. At this time, the corner of his eye was on Yi Yun. He noticed that the kid had taken off his flying fish robe. The torn flying fish robe had been thrown messily on the ground by Yi Yun. It revealed Yi Yun's undershirt. It was a shining shirt that looked like silk veil. Sorry, I want to take off my clothes. Yi Yun wiped the sweat from his forehead and said, Take off your clothes? Is it too hot from the workout? A few Jing State young masters looked at each other and were speechless. This Yi Yun was weird. As a warrior, what was a bit of heat? One just needed to circulate Yuan Qi and the sweat would all evaporate immediately. But country people probably manned the fields bareback, so they could understand. But when Yi Yun took off his shirt, Song Zijuan, who had been calm all along, even when Yi Yun began the 16th level of difficulty, suddenly changed in expression. Yen Meng Long's eyes also lit up, though he continued stroking his chin, he was stunned. Flowing mercury gown. Yen Meng Long was shocked. What? Some people were confused and looked curiously towards Yen Meng Long. For a person like Yen Menglong to lose his composure meant it was something special. Flowing mercury gown? Was that the clothes Yi Yun took off? The Jing State young masters looked curiously towards the shirt in Yi Yun's hands. Besides it being thin, there was nothing special about it. Could this be? Song Zijuan looked incredulously at the flowing mercury gown in Yi Yun's hands. This is the mystic grade 3 flowing mercury gown from the Lin family. It's a treasure to train one's movement and strength. It could be bought at auctions, but the price is so high to the point that there are no buyers most of the time. Mystic Grade 3 Flowing Mercury Gown can change its weight from 10 cauldrons to 1,000 cauldrons according to the wearer's preference. Not only that, it will restrict a person's movement. Every movement while wearing it takes a lot of effort. Previously, while in the array, you were always wearing this, Song Zijuan's voice trembled. He had worn something similar, but it wasn't made by the Lin family, but he was very familiar with the flowing mercury gown. What the hell? The Jing State Young Masters faction were dumbfounded upon seeing Song Zijuan lose his composure. All their ears echoed was change its weight from 10 cauldrons to 1,000 cauldrons. 10 cauldrons? Even the lightest was 10 cauldrons. Is he talking about this shirt? Yi Yun had been demonstrating minute subtlety while wearing a 10 cauldron heavy flowing mercury gown in the midst of the frost metal blood balls array? This must be a joke. Chapter 151 Changes into a Dragon Upon Facing a Storm The Jing State Young Masters could not accept it and were in disbelief. This light looking shirt had the weight of 10 cauldrons? And Yi Yun was wearing that and handled 15 levels of difficulty in the array so easily? This must be a joke. The shirt. Can I see it? Song Zijuan reached out his hand as he looked at Yi Yun with obvious respect. It was the respect given to the strong. Yi Yun handed over the flowing mercury gown. Song Zijuan held it with both hands and gently felt the softness of the flowing mercury gown as his eyes looked on it with mesmerization. Fine workmanship, superior quality. It's indeed an excellent flowing mercury gown, Song Zijuan reluctantly handed back the flowing mercury gown to Yi Yun. There were heavy clothing that were sold on the market, but those had fixed weights and were similar to armor, making the wearer clumsy and affecting their movement. 
But the flowing mercury gown could not only adjust its weight freely, it was also soft and thin. If one ignored the weight, it did not affect the wearer's movement. The difference in quality was too big. Song Zijuan had previously worn similar clothes, but the quality was nothing like the one in Ian's hands. Seeing Song Zijuan's solemn expression, the Jing State young masters had no choice but to believe it. The flowing mercury gown, as Song Zijuan had said, was at least ten cauldrons heavy when worn. Yi Yun wore a ten cauldron shirt and used minute subtlety while doing so. What sort of concept was this? The Jing State young masters could no longer imagine it. Suddenly, Yi Yun's body flashed into the frost metal blood balls array. Taking off the flowing mercury gown made Yi Yun's body light as a swallow. Previously, he had grown accustomed to the flowing mercury gown's weight. With it suddenly removed, it was as if his body was weightless. He had grown accustomed to the restrictions by the flowing mercury gown where he had to overcome the strong binding force of the flowing mercury gown with every move. Now with the restraint gone, Eon's control of his body was even more accurate and precise. It was as he pleased. Shu. 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 Eon easily dodged all the frost metal blood balls. Sixteen levels of difficulty could not push Eon to his limits any longer. Ha ha! Delightful! Yi Yun was delighted. To suddenly lose that restraint and being able to move as he pleased, allowing him to complete extreme moves, it made him feel happy and delighted. But, the blood pearl speed was not fast enough. It made Yi Yun feel that there was something lacking. Add one more difficulty. Yi Yun shouted. The Jing State young masters did not know what to say when they heard him shout. When Song Zijuan previously introduced the flowing mercury gown, they were mentally prepared that Yi Yun's capability had reached crazy standards. But when they saw Yi Yun easily dodge all the frost metal blood balls and wanted to add another level of difficulty, their hearts sank. 17 Levels of Difficulty This increase in difficulty was not just a tiny amount. The Jing State young master controlling the array opened his dry mouth as he pressed down on the 17th crystal with a trembling finger. Boom! The moment the difficulty was cranked up, the entire array roared and quaked. Every frost metal blood ball was screaming through the air and moved like meteors hurtling around. Wind patterns that could be seen with the naked eye created winds that were like blades. A soldier had a brush with a wind blade and felt his face hurt. Just the force wind was terrifying. The power of the array could no longer be compared to the previous levels. After taking off the flowing mercury gown, Yi Yun's eyes burned with fighting spirit going against such an array. The force wind made Yi Yun feel like he was caught in a swamp. Every pore of his body felt restrained by immense pressure. When the 17 levels of difficulty initiated, the 17 blood pearls no longer simply attacked. They could feel each other and were connected. They could now cooperate. The 17 frost metal blood balls continued to smash into each other, creating thousands of permutations. Each collision was with a different strength, leading to a subtle change. This made the array unpredictable, with no traces of a solution to be found. Shu. 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 Three blood pearls flew towards Yi Yun in a Triforce pattern, and at the same time, ten blood pearls gathered behind Yi Yun, sealing off his retreat. Yi Yun constricted his pupils and twisted his body in a magical angle, dodging all the blood pearls. At seventeen levels of difficulty, Yi Yun had to consume several times more mental power to calculate, and did thousands of tiny adjustments just to be able to barely cope with the crisis again and again. In his trance-like movements, Yi Yun felt he had perfectly coordinated his body and mind within the array. Under the high level of concentration, it made him experience a mysterious realm. His body turned soft, as if he did not have any bones. Every joint and every muscle in his body could be moved according to his wishes. They could make the most minute of changes, attaining a perfect combination. Such high levels of concentration and physical change made him reach a point where he could control his body to an extreme level. 
Gradually over time, Yi Yun began to feel severe physical exhaustion. Slowly, the sweat on his body began to turn into a mist. This was an indication of a body being pushed to its limits. It was where the body became so hot that even the sweat boiled off. This feeling is really delightful. I should be able to go one step further. Yi Yun was experiencing both pain and pleasure. But the huge amount of pain made him understand every detailed change of his body. Minute subtlety was originally an observation of everything, pushed to its limits. Yi Yun was fully immersed in an indescribable happiness. Little by little, the ripples made by his body spread out slowly. It was unknown when Yi Yun's facial expression disappeared. He entered a trance-like mystic state. He had the illusion that every inch of his body had been extended by a foot. Within this one foot, it was as if it was his own world, his own territory. When his feeling occurred, his posture within the array eased up. Whenever a blood pearl entered a one foot distance from him, he would immediately have a reaction. With a slight move, he would avoid the attack before the blood pearl could have any change in direction. To the people outside the array, Yi Yin seemed to have gained the ability of foresight. Buzz. Suddenly, the array underwent a strange change. Seven frost metal blood balls simultaneously bumped into each other and changed directions in the air. It suddenly flew in all directions, sealing Yi Yun's maneuvering space. Chain of seven pearls. The people exclaimed. There were too many bizarre changed at 17 levels of difficulty. At this difficulty, not only were they simply fast, but the blood pearls had a charm associated with their attacks. When the sons of the vast wilderness saw this scene, their hearts tightened. Seeing the frost metal blood balls almost hitting Yi Yun, although he was covered in sweat and steam, his mind was still. Yi Yun closed his eyes. When the seven blood pearls flew within the one foot radius, it was like the blood pearls' force created invisible waves within his territory that allowed Yi Yun to fully perceive them. In an instant, Yi Yun circulated his Yuan Qi to its limits. Every inch of his muscles were agitated at high speeds. He could detect the metallic smell of the pearls flying towards him at neck breaking speed with each breath he took. Yi Yun's concentration was focused on the pearls. The image of the seven frost metal blood balls flying towards him was reflected within his mind. Yi Yun's movement and footwork miraculously made a hundred minor changes. To others, it was as if Yi Yun was stepping on a formless water surface, and each step created a wonderful ripple. Phew! The seven frost metal blood balls passed through Yi Yun's figure. It gave people the impression that they had pierced through Yi Yun's body. Ah! Many people exclaimed aloud. But the next moment, they clearly realized that none of the blood pearls had hit Yi Yun. Yi Yun's movements remained smooth and fluid. The line of shadows he left behind lingered on. Yi Yun had dodged the chain of seven pearls in a way they could not understand. This. How did he do that? Whether it was the sons of the vast wilderness or the Jing state young masters, they were all completely shocked. Yi Yun's movement was like magic. His figure seemed to have lost its rigidness, leaving behind a mass of air. So no matter how the frost metal blood balls attacked, they were shuttling through empty air, not even once hitting Yi Yun. Minute subtlety, large success stage. Yi Yun has already reached the threshold of the large success stage of minute subtlety, General Yan eyes were radiant. It was amazing to reach this realm. Minute subtlety, large success stage? Outside the array, Song Zijuan's expression was complex. As for the Jing state young masters, their faces twitched. They could no longer make any other expression. They had been shocked numb by Yi Yun. The introductory stage of minute subtlety was to have precise control of one's body. Using the smallest movement to avoid an attack. The efficiency of the movements is above 90%. The small success stage of minute subtlety was to feel the attacker's force, using the attacker's force to power one's movements. It was to use one's opponent's strength back at the opponent. 
As for the large success stage of minute subtlety, it was to feel the heaven and earth's force, merging oneself with the surrounding space, making it one's absolute territory. Currently, Yi Yun had made an area a foot around himself his own. As long as Yi Yun focused, his every move could be done with perfect harmony and flawlessly. Yi Yun had only barely reached the threshold of the large success stage of minute subtlety and had not fully understood it. But this was a realm that the Jing State young masters were already unable to comprehend. Amazing! A Jin Lin is in no case a common creature living in the pool, but it will change into a dragon upon facing a storm. Yen Menglong had a premonition that Yi Yun would one day skyrocket, becoming a rising new star in the Tai A Divine Kingdom. Chapter 152 The Heart for Martial Arts Yi Yun, who was in the Frost Metal Blood Balls array, had now completely immersed himself in his own world. Yi Yun did not hear any of the comments coming from General Yen or the Jing State Young Masters. All he felt was the one foot area around his body that was his own territory. The ability to have complete control over this small space made Yi Yun obsessed. Ever since coming to this alternate world, as Yi Yun's knowledge of the martial world grew deeper, the greater his interest in the exploration of martial arts became. Martial arts was like a beautiful treasure vault. Within it, there were numerous mysteries and truths waiting for a warrior to explore them. And every time he sought after a higher goal, he would gain a deeper understanding, which delighted him. Yi Yun still remembered the time when he flew across the endless mountains and canyons with Lin Xintong. It was intoxicating. And there was also the thrill his strength gave him while battling fierce beasts in the desolate human valley. Also, with power, he could obtain stature, position, respect and happiness for his family and friends. By settling vengeances quickly, he could be in charge of the world, and could mete out justice to the good and wicked. All of this gave Yi Yun a thirst. An endless thirst to climb higher, to explore the high levels of martial arts. Human life is so short and passes so quickly. By obtaining the Purple Crystal Origins, a bizarre item that might have caused the Purple Cloud's birth in the vast wilderness, it allowed Yun to lead a heaven-defying and satisfying life, creating his own legend. He was not to covet a moment's pleasure. Even though he could have a harem, but after a few hundred years, the outcome would be him turning back to soil. Vegetables and rice took a year to grow, but they still ended up in the stomachs of mortals. But a black iron stone had to experience thousands of years of polish. Their brightness allowed them to last for millions of years. Ian knew that he was still in the polishing stage. He had to have the patience, perseverance and courage to accomplish all of it. By entering the Frost Metal Blood Balls array, Ian had reached the threshold of the Minute Subtlety's large success stage. It also reinforced his wish to practice martial arts. Seconds changed to minutes and after 30 minutes, only when Yi Yun was completely drained did he gradually leave that mysterious feeling. Upon exiting the Frost Metal Blood Balls array, all Yi Yun saw were the Jing State Young Masters and the Sons of the Vast Wilderness watching at him as if he was a monster. Their eyes were filled with awe, envy, jealousy, and worship. Brothery, you're awesome, the Sons of the Vast Wilderness said it from the bottom of their hearts. Yi Yun said, I'm only better at movement techniques, as for other aspects, I'm not that good. Yi Yun was saying the truth. His minute subtlety was thanks to his perceptivity. This realm was unreachable by many people his own age. As for other aspects, Yi Yun was good at them, but he was not at an abnormal level. The Jing State Young Master's eyes dodged Yi Yun. Song Zijuan was at his limit with 16 levels of difficulty and could only last 30 minutes. But Yi Yun had managed to last with flair in 17 levels of difficulty for 30 minutes. This strength made their faces swollen. Is anyone else challenging? Yen Menglong's question was met with total silence. What a joke! Who could win against Yi Yun? Seeing this, Yen Menglong laughed heartily and said, My Jin Longwei is least afraid of competition and challenge to aim high and never giving up. As long as you have the ability, you can pull down your superiors and me in the training field. Today, Yi Yun's agility is number one. 
According to my promise, I have two weapons and two bone relics awaiting you. Come, follow me. Yen Nenglong said as he beckoned Yun over. Zhang Tan patted Yen's shoulder and said with envy, Kid, you are good. General Yen seldom gives such great praise. Two weapons from the top grade armory makes me envious too. Yi Yun smiled with mixed thoughts. Weapon Choosing a weapon was a serious matter. The Divine Capital's Jin Longwei Top Grade Armory was also known as the Divine Capital Armory. It was situated at the back of the Divine Capital's Jin Longwei's camp. The armory was made of large slabs of obsidian rock. It looked majestic from the outside. The weapons that were stored in the Divine Capital Armory were the best of the best treasures. Yi Yun came to the Divine Capital Armory's entrance and felt a deathly aura. This aura came from the exquisite weapons within the armory. The weapons were not all new. Some of them had been out in the field and tasted fresh blood. Some of those weapons had even slain human experts or strong primordial desolate beasts. Only weapons that have killed had such a murderous intent spreading out. How is it? Yen Menglong asked Di Yun with a smile after seeing his reaction. My blood is boiling. Yi Yun answered tersely. Ha, ah, good. Let's go in and take a look. With Yen Menglong in front, he led Yi Yun into the Divine Capital Armory. After seeing the inside, it was unlike what Yi Yun expected. The weapons were not placed on racks, but stuck within large rocks. On every three-foot black stone platform, there was a weapon embedded within it. There were sabers, swords, spears and halberds. Just after Yi Yun walked into the armory, he saw a spear, which was three meters long. It was shaped in a savage way, like a twisted serpent spear. It was embedded in a rough stone foundation. This long spear was mottled brown, as if it was dyed in blood. Seeing the spear, Yi Yun felt something. He stepped forward to touch it. The spear was cold and hard. It was like frozen cold iron. Yen Menglong laughed saying, Kid, this spear is known as Breaking General. Why it's named that is because many generals from ancient times use spears. With a long spear in hand, they can charge in and kill many enemies in one go. Extremely delightful. If you were to use this spear, it would be too long for you. Eun's body was still not grown up, so this spear was about twice Eun's height. Eun nodded. He knew he had just began. There were plenty of weapons within the armory. Eun glanced over and the various kinds of weapons dazed him. He did not know where to begin. He slowly walked and touched each weapon gently. Sometimes, Eun would climb up the stone platform and grab the weapon's handle, hoping to find a special feeling so that he knew that that was the right one. Although they were all exquisite and had an extraordinary past, Ian found that there wasn't a big difference among the weapons after several tries. This made Ian lost. Yen Menglong gave Ian a meaningful glance. He could guess his thoughts and asked, you can't decide which to choose? Ian thought and said, it should be. I can't decide what type to choose. Many warriors would only use one weapon type in their entire life. Those who use swords would carry on using swords, and those who use spears would carry on using spears. It was a great deal to choose a weapon that was appropriate for himself. Yen Menglong stroked his chin and said, Yi Yun, some warriors are naturally attuned with a type of weapon. For example, I have seen natural swordsmen. They seem to be born for the sword. Such people have to choose the most compatible weapon. But there are people who are not sensitive to any weapon type. Any weapon suits them. Such people do not need to have an exclusive weapon and is left up to their own desires. Weapons are an extension of a warrior's body. Some weapons are even a warrior's life. For instance, I have seen natural swordsmen who wished they could change their bodies into a sword. These kinds of people have excellent swordplay. But the moment they are separated from their swords, their battle power will be reduced. It is an extreme, 
and it has its advantages and disadvantages. For people like them, they adapt to the weapon, but others would choose to make the weapon adapt to themselves. These people are strong, so it wouldn't matter which weapon they chose. For example, even in cultivation techniques, the Taya sacred technique may be a top-level cultivation technique, but it is not the be-all end-all of cultivation techniques. You can choose to practice the Taya sacred technique to an extreme level, but you can also choose other cultivation techniques, merging all the cultivation techniques into one for yourself. There are two paths. It's difficult to say which is better. One is narrow, but pushes you to the peak, while the other is wide, and might make you go through many detours. You take your pick. Yen Menglong's words inspired Yi Yun. This was insight gained from real experience, enlightening Yi Yun. I understand. Yi Yun nodded his head. He had already made up his mind. Chapter 153, Yi Yun's Weapon Yen Menglong let him choose two weapons, it would not make sense for them to be the same weapon type. Yi Yun had decided to choose a long-range and short-range weapon. Long-range weapons were bows, crossbows, stealth weapons, spears or battle axes. Among the long-range weapons in the Divine Capital's armory, there were the greatest number of crossbows present. To an army, stealth weapons were not suitable. As for spears and battle axes, they were only used in tribes. These weapons were too heavy and only suited for hunting. It would be tough to carry these weapons over long distances. A person's carrying limit was about 10 spears or 10 battle axes. Yi Yun tried each one to get a feeling. Suddenly Yi Yun felt something special when he touched a bow. The feeling was not obvious and was difficult to explain, but it existed like an inseparable link. Bow. For my first weapon, I'll choose a bow. Oh, you are choosing a bow? Yen Menglong's eyes lit up. In the army, there are 18 martial skills, and the bow is first. Among the 18 skills, bow is first, crossbow second, spear third, saber fourth, sword fifth, polearm sixth, all the way to bare fighting fists at 18. In the 18 martial skills, the bow is first, and bare fighting last. Bear fighting was to fight barehanded. A warrior would not always have their weapon beside them, for instance having their weapon shatter is a likely event. Hence, fighting barehanded is also extremely important. Hence as the last entry among the 18 martial skills, it was leaving the best for last. The Ba was ranked the king among the 18 martial skills because it was the king among long-range weapons. It was extremely important between two armies. To a low-level warrior, a crossbow would be easier to operate and learn. But a crossbow relies on mechanical power, so the power from it depends on the crossbow's own body. But a bow fully depended on a warrior's arm strength. Thus from ancient times, generals and human lords all used bows. The best weapon for obtaining the head of a rival army was the bow. A speed of a bow was not something a crossbow could compete with it was faster by at least four to five times. When a human expert pulls a thousand cauldron bow, they can collapse a city wall with their continuous shots. Seeing Yen Menglong acknowledge his choice, Yi Yun immediately took down a red battle bow. He pulled the bow and stretched it to the utmost. Compared to his agility, Yi Yun's arm strength was not as monstrous, but he was still far stronger than a warrior at the same level. After all, Yi Yun had reached the tempered body, dragon pulse state. When he stretched open the red battle bow, Yi Yun's joints sounded out like rustling of frying beans. Yen Menglong stroked his chin and nodded slightly, not bad, this is the sequoia bow made by the Su family in the gene state. Black iron was forged a thousand times into the bow. A typical early stage purple blood warrior can hardly pull the bow open. Only a peak purple blood warrior could pull this bow and shoot continuously. This bow can easily pierce through a near-horned beast. Yi Yun shook his head and placed down the sequoia bow. Oh? You find it too light? Yen Menglong smiled at Yi Yun. Yi Yun nodded, it's not bad now, but my strength grows rapidly. This bow will outlive its use very soon. 
For a peak purple blood warrior to be able to string the bow made it unchallenging for Yi Yun. Ha, ah, good. Follow me. Yen Menglong said and brought Yi Yun around a large stone pillar. He retrieved a bow from behind the pillar, try this one. Yen Menglong threw a black iron bow over to Yi Yun. He looked meaningfully at Yi Yun, as if he wanted to test him. Yi Yun caught the bow and immediately felt his arm sink. Such a heavy bow. Yi Yun was shocked. This bow was difficult for an ordinary warrior to lift, let alone stringing it to shoot arrows. Yi Yun used his strength to pull. The bow gave a dull sound as he only managed to pull it open by a tiny amount. Yi Yun raised his eyebrow. It sure was hard. With his strength of being able to pull hundreds of thousands of pounds of beast meat, he could not open up this bow. Even a peak purple blood warrior might not be able to use this black iron bow. How is it? Do you think it's enough for you? Yi Yun went into deep thought for a while. He closed his eyes and felt the bow's energy and the tremors when he pulled the bow. After that, Yi Yun shook his head. Oh? Yen Menglong frowned slightly. You can only pull open this bow by a tiny amount, and you still think it's not enough? You do know that pulling the initial way just uses a tiny amount of strength. When you reach the end, you will need even more strength. This bow is enough for you in the purple blood realm, and you are not satisfied? Yi Yun thought for a while and considered his choice of words, the strength needed is enough, but, when I held the bow, it was lacking a compatibility. It was like there a lacking spiritual connection. Yi Yun's voice was hesitant, as he described with uncertainty, the mysterious feelings he had when pulling the bow. Although there was a weak compatible feeling when he touched the sequoia bow, it still existed. But when it came to the black iron bow, it only felt cold to Yi Yun. Oh? Yen Menglong looked with Yi Yun with surprise, you actually have that feeling? Compatibility? Yes, Yi Yun nodded. Yen Menglong took the black iron bow from Yi Yun and casually pulled it. The black iron bow gave off a dull sound before it was pulled fully open. Yen Menglong released. Pying. A loud ring came from the bow as it quivered. It was like the surrounding air had been pulled along by this great strength and giving off violent tremors. Yi Yun looked with hidden surprise. He was curious about Yen Menglong's arm strength. Kid, you sure have some insight. This black iron bow may be heavy, but its value is much lower than the sequoia bow you saw earlier. The sequoia bow was made specially by a blacksmith refiner. But this black iron bow was only made by a high-class blacksmith. The black iron bow is hard only because of its material. Looks like. Among the long-range weapons, you have some natural sensitivity with bows. Not bad. Yen Menglong hesitated for a moment before saying, Fine. Since then, I'll show you that bow. Saying that, Yen Menglong brought Yi Yun deep into the armory. In the deepest parts of the armory, after going around a stone pillar, Yi Yun saw a door made of stone. Seeing this stone door made Yi Yun excited as he was full of anticipation. In the Divine Capital Armory, this bow was still kept separately in a secret chamber, which meant it was extraordinary. Yen Menglong took out a key and opened the stone door. Yi Yun followed him into a stone chamber. On the stone wall, there was a black long bow. By the two ends of the bow, there were bayonets. The moment Yi Yun saw this battle bow, his eyes lit up. He could feel an aura contained within like it was restraining some absolute power. Tai Tsung Bao It was made by a bow-making grandmaster that came from the Tsung state's reclusive aristocratic family, the Zhang family. The Zhang family is an aristocratic bow and arrow family. The word, Zhang, has the meaning of bow within it. It is also used to describe the number of bows, such as one Zhang of bow, two Zhang of bows. Try it. Hearing Yen Monlong's introduction, Yi Yun had a great feeling of excitement. He jumped forward and took the bow off the wall. The first thought that came to Yi Yun's mind was heavy. 
Hearing Yen Monlong's introduction, Yi Yun had a great feeling of excitement. He jumped forward and took the bow off the wall. The first thought that came to Yi Yun's mind was heavy. This tight Sang Bao's body was not thicker than a thumbnail, but it was much more heavier than the black iron bow. The tight Sang Bao was made entirely of metal. But holding the tight Sang Bao, Yi Yun found that compatibility again. In fact, it was more than ten times stronger than the feeling when he held the sequoia bow. Immediately, Yi Yun fell in love with the bow. Yen Menglong said, the Taitsang bow's body is made of Taitsang metal. Taitsang metal essence is a family secret of the Zhang family. This metal is forged using the finest divine black iron, making the divine black metal have incredible flexibility. A shake of metal pole made from tight sung metal the width of a thumbnail can create tremors that can blast a person into pieces. And not only that, this tight sung metal essence allows you to inject Yuan Qi into it. The hardness and toughness of the tight sung metal essence will increase a result. The more Yuan Qi you inject into it, the harder it becomes, making it harder to pull. Its strength increases too. Not even you, even for me, when using this tight sang bao, there is no limit to how much strength you can put into it. There is no fear that your strength can exceed the bao's limits. As long as it's the Zhang family's tight sang bao, if you can inject an entire ocean's worth of yuan qi into it, you can really shoot down the sun and the stars, piercing the sky. With Yen Meng Long's description, it made Yi Yun's blood boil. This was indeed a great bao. Look at the two ends of the tight sung bow. There are wrought iron blades mounted on the tight sung metal essence and with a swish can break any ordinary sword. The bow tip is made from black bone giant rhinoceros horns. As for the bow string, it is made from an unknown number of processes. The Tsang state Zhang family obtained the ribs of a giant python desolate beasts and twisted them into the bow string. It was then soaked into a mixture brewed from shark skin for 18 years before completion. Yen Menglong's description and the gaze he gave to Yi Yun conveyed a message. To give you this bow would be too good for a kid like you. But even without Yen Menglong's description, Yi Yun could tell the strong feelings the bow gave to him. How could an ordinary item be placed in a stone chamber by itself? It was probably the most precious weapon within the Divine Capital Armory. Kid, try pulling it. Don't inject any Yuan Qi, or you will definitely not be able to pull it open. Just use your body strength. I'll warn you, if you can't even pull it past the halfway mark, you are to play no tricks and put this bow back. As Yin Menglong said, he was pinching his stubble. It was clear that he felt pain in his heart to give such a bow to Yi Yun. Yi Yun could no longer wait. He immediately took a deep breath and with Qi rushing into his dantian and in a horse riding stance, he used his waist as an arm and pumped all his muscles. Open. Yi Yun roared. His joints issued a kakaka sound as the tight sung bow slowly bent, from a 0% to a 50% as he approached 100%. Yi Yun had managed to use his own body's strength to pull the tight sung bow to the three-quarter mark. Chapter 154, The Second Choice Translator, C. Talon Editor, C. Talon Tempered Body, Dragon Pulse Together with the training from the flowing mercury gown, you are constantly overcoming its binding strength. So your strength is pretty good. Yen Menglong stroked his chin and nodded, having given you such a good bow, don't disappoint me. With this bow, be it out training or to achieving accomplishments in the future, there will be a form of assurance. Thank you, General. Yi Yun gave his heartfelt thanks. He knew he had revealed enough, resulting in Yin Menglong to show such commitment to nurturing him. With the tight sung bow slung around his back, Yi Yun took the quiver. It was filled with wind chasing arrows that were specially made for the tight sung bow. They were made out of frost metal and their fletchings were made from the feathers of a primordial lineage monster bird. Such arrows could not change directions even with a Yuan Qi outburst from an opponent. They were top grade arrows. Such expensive arrows would be a waste to shoot out. Strong bowmen could attach some Yuan Qi to the arrow shaft, retrieving it after shooting it. 
After choosing the arrows and bow was the melee weapon. Yun looked through the entire Divine Capital Armory and he touched every weapon to decide on his selection. This time, Yen Menglong did not say a thing and let Yun choose by himself. Yun was unhurried. After two hours, he finally stood in front of a large rock. There was a saber embedded in this large rock. Although it was a saber, it looked like a spear. This saber was six feet in length. Its handle was one foot two inches, resulting in a total length of seven feet two inches. It was almost equivalent to the height of an adult male and was much taller than Yi Yun. There were silver gray lines on the long saber's blade that looked like beautiful cracked ice on a lake in winter. Although the saber was extremely long, it was only two inches wide. The blade's curvature was extremely mild. Together with its length, it made the saber almost straight, and it also felt like a sword. It was like a saber and a sword at the same time. It could be used as a saber and it could also be used as a spear. This saber's exaggerated look reminded the Yun of katanas or miyadeos he had seen before. The word miao had nothing to do with addressing citizens but described the miyadeo's narrow blade in length, which looked like a sprouted plant. Of course, compared to the miyadeo, katanas or samurai swords, they were much shorter than the saber Yun saw. The longer the blade was, the stronger each cleave could deliver. And the narrower the blade, the faster the saber was. With those two points, a blade master saber tends to be long and narrow. But the narrower and longer a saber was, the easier it was to break. It could be broken by an opponent's weapon, broken with Yuan Qi, or even broken by bones. Katanas and samurai swords were considered long, but they were not made too long for fear of breaking in battle. In this alternate world, the blade crafting masters could push the narrowness and length to the fullest. This was because they had absolute confidence in the sabers they created. It was a real horse chopping saber. A saber was given the name horse chopping because of its length, which allows it to split a horse into two. And the saber Yun shows could completely split a horse vertically. He could split an opponent and his horse from head to toe. This is it. Yun grabbed the saber's shaft with both hands and pulled out the saber. Wang when the blade separated from the stone, its blade gave off a low hum of metal and a surging cold chill. It was like a dragon breaking out of its restraints, giving off an extended roar. A good saber. Yun's eyes lit up and used the saber to demonstrate nine mysterious swords of heaven. Although it was a saber, it was not much different from a sword, hence it suited the nine mysterious swords of heaven. In an instant, Yun was covered with flashes of light like a snowstorm. The blade winds generated by Yun left tiny scratches on the walls and ground. Enough, stop messing around. Yen Menglong stopped Yun grumpily, the thousand army saber. Kid, you sure have thieving eyes. This thousand army saber was also made by a master. Although it was worth less than the Tai Tsung Bao, it was also one of the best weapons in the Divine Capital Armory. The Thousand Army Saber was made of ice frost metal. On the ice frost metal, there were pretty lines, which looked like a cracked ice surface. These lines were not there originally but left there from the arduous forging process. The ice frost metal had a natural coldness to it. As the material of a saber, immersing the saber into a pond during summer would freeze it. Using it to cut through other people's weapons was as easy as cutting through the mud. Other than normal weapons, even Ian's Yenchi saber would not last more than a few strikes against the Thousand Army saber before breaking. Tai Tsong Bao Wind Chasing Arrows Thousand Army Saber Kid, you sure got a windfall. Yen Menglong heart ached from Ian's choice of the Tai Tsong Bao and the Thousand Army saber. Compared to those two weapons, the two inferior grade desolate bone relics had a much lower value. Kid, you aren't even as tall as the saber and you already took away my thousand army saber. Yen Menglong's face looked pissed. The thousand army saber was not much shorter than Yen Menglong, let alone Yi Yun. Thank you for the general's generosity. Yi Yun said it from the bottom of his heart. 
He knew that although Yen Menglong hated to part with it verbally, he still had the intentions to give Yi Yun both the Taizang Bao and the Thousand Army Saber. After all, Yen Menglong was the who purposely brought Yi Yun to choose the Taizang Bao. With the weapons chosen, the desolate bone relics are not a problem. Following that, there's still your land. F asterisk asterisk K, I'm seriously bleeding today. Yen Menglong swore as he spoke. After affirming Yi Yun, he was more relaxed, and no longer gave off a high and mighty feeling. Yi Yun sheepishly scratched his head saying, I came to the central plains with only a few dozen followers. I wouldn't need a large piece of land. A small one would do. In the Tai A Divine Kingdom, the monarch had absolute control over a vast piece of land. Below him, there were 108 states that were distributed. Each state was controlled by a duke. A duke would then split the land further to generals and other state ministers of the vassal state. The general would then distribute it among the thousand households and kingdom knights. Yi Yun was the lowest of the nobles, so his land came from Yen Menglong. Yen Menglong patted Yi Yun's shoulders and said, You will soar in the future. Soon, you will be taking some land from the divine capital, and when that happens, this land will come back into my hands. So, I'll give you a good piece of land. It will make you look good in front of your people and your sister. Yen Menglong had been very attentive about Yi Yun. He knew Yi Yun was very close to his sister Jiang Shuro. He took out an animal skin map from his interspatial ring and circled the land to be given to Yi Yun. Chapter 155 Soft Cloud Mountain Manor Two hours later, Yi Yun took Jiang Shuro, Zhou Xiaoka, and the other followers to his land under the Jin Longwei's guidance. With the divine capital as a city, it was under the Duke of the Jing State, and it was his own territory. As for the other nobles' territory, they were outside the city. Ian's land was about a hundred miles away from the divine capital, which was an extremely good location. Upon reaching the land, the people of the Lian tribal clan were amazed. Ian's land was not some barren land. There was even a house within his land. To be specific, it was a manor. Although the courtyard, being a mile in circumference, didn't sound big, it looked spectacular. The houses were close together in a row, and there were pavilions, rockeries, and ponds. It resembled the gardens of Jiannan. Such a large manor could hold a few thousand people. Yiyan knew that in the mortal kingdom palaces, they were a few miles in radius. They could hold thousands of houses and even ten thousand houses. Eunuchs had to ride a horse just to light up the rooms. Although a kingdom knight was the lowest of all nobles, in the Tai A Divine Kingdom, it is still extremely good. Yi Yun sighed. The Tai A Divine Kingdom's territory was so vast that it was difficult to measure. So for the normal nobles, they were all given land, but the nobility rank was not hereditary in the Tai A Divine Kingdom. Wealth could be inherited but not the title. Without the title, one did not have the land. If the next generation was useless, they would have to quickly give up the land. Hence, the sons of the nobility would often work hard on cultivation. They actually were more stressed than normal people. After all, after being used to a pampered and decent life, to not be able to maintain it was not only a loss of material goods, but a psychological pain of humiliation. The main entrance to the manor could allow four to five wagons to travel side by side. There was a red lacquer door and it had ingots, the size of a fist, on it. There were two large stone lions by the door and beside the stone lions, there was a flying fish stone sculpture. Yi Yun led the people into the manor. There were lines of red brick walls and glazed tiles. The manor was surrounded by thick century-old trees. There were many pavilions, magnificent buildings, and a wide practice ground. There was also an emerald green pond. These images were too much for the eye to feast on. The Lian tribal clan people were all stunned. They had never heard of such a manor, let alone seen one. In the cloud wilderness, they all lived in cottages and the walls were made of mud. The best ones built their houses out of stone, which was a great luxury. 
and Yun's manor was built with fine cement bricks through an arduous process. The resulting bricks were strong and even smooth to the touch. The wood used to make the house was good aged pine. As for materials like snow fir and golden lines nanmu, Yun's rank was still insufficient. It was not that he could not afford it, but his rank was not high enough. The Lian tribal clan did not know the costs of the houses. If they knew, their jaws would have dropped off. This was the world of warriors. The materials used by mortals to build houses may sound precious, but compared to the treasures used by the warriors, it was nothing. Either of Yun's two weapons, the Tai Tsang Bao and the Thousand Army Saber, was worth more than the entire manor. At that instant, the people who were unacquainted with the world grew excited from everything that was new around them. They wanted to touch and to look, but they were afraid they would break something. So big, so pretty. Seeing the scenery, Zhou Xiaoka was full of joy. She could no longer resist the crystal clear pond. She rolled up her trousers, took off her shoes and jumped into the pond to play. Her pair of tiny feet gleamed, which dazzled others. She chased after the butterflies in the garden and played with the koi in the ponds. She had a great time playing by herself. The other Lian tribal clan's children were envious seeing Zhou Xiaoka play like this. Yi Yun had brought many children during this migration as the children were most innocent. They had simple minds. It was easy for them to become loyal. Actually, Yi Yun did not care about loyalty, all he wanted was for them to not have wicked hearts that harmed people. On the road to the central plains, these children had been exhorted by their parents that, upon arriving in a young's house, the boys were to become manservants, and the girls to become servant girls. They had to understand the rules and not do anything they wished like they did in the tribe. According to the rules of the Tai A Divine Kingdom, they had entered the Kingdom Knight's territory. Their title was seeking refuge from the master. Besides Yi Yun and his sister, Zhang Shiro, all of them, including Zhou Xiaoka, were slaves. So now, they were all reserved, and did not dare to enjoy playing like Zhou Xiaoka. But, having chosen these people specially, he did not treat them as slaves. Before leaving the cloud wilderness, Yi Yun had did a character test on everyone he took away. Those that had questionable characters, plundering by cajolery and coercion, or bullies were left behind in the vast wilderness. They were given some meat and left to run their own course. This was to prevent the bad people from mixing in. Some people were innately bad. They wouldn't show gratitude just because they were taken out of the vast wilderness. When Ian was around, they would be servile, but once Ian left, it was hard to tell. Ian was joining the Jin Longway and was destined to train and fight in wars. It would be normal for him not to be at home for several years. If there were wicked people within his home, then they could betray him, erode the benefits of the manor and create all sorts of trouble. They could even do something to Zhou Xiaoka and Zhang Xiaro. It was something Yi Yun did not wish to think about. Hence, Yi Yun did not bring more than a hundred people from the Lian tribal clan out of the vast wilderness. Yi Yun said, in the future, just treat this manor as the Lian tribal clan. This is our new village. It's just a prettier village. Go ahead and play, there are no restrictions. Yi Yun said casually. The children were initially scared, but Yi Yun smiled and chose a few children he was familiar with and let them lead the other children to play. Initially, they were all timid, but slowly they opened up and played happily. They chased each other across corridors, played hide and seek in the rockery and splashed water in the ponds. The water droplets that splashed up in the air were like pearls in the sun. To the children of the vast wilderness, everything related to this manor was fresh. It made them excited and fond of it. Seeing the children's innocent smiles, even the adults had big smiles of satisfaction. Yi Yun was pleased too. He was glad he had brought happiness to these good, honest people. In the future, this manor shall be called the Soft Clouds, Ro Yun, Mountain Manor. Zhang Shiro was shocked when she heard Yi Yun said it as she turned to face Yi Yun. Facing the setting sun, Zhang Shiro's face suffused a reddish glow, Soft Clouds Mountain Manor, sounds very good. 
Of course she knew that Soft Cloud Mountain Manor were parts of her and Ian's name, combined together. In the Soft Clouds Mountain Manor, there were clouds and mountain. The clouds were soft and the mountains were green. It was an artistic concept that gave limitless fanciful thoughts. The manor, in addition to the houses, had several thousands of acres of fertile fields. Not only did these fields grow crops, they also grew mulberry and tea leaves. Beside the fertile fields, there was a large river. Its water entered the fish ponds, and the water could be used for irrigation and fish farming. Not far off, there were beast pens and horse stables. They could be used to feed the owner's mount and also raise livestock and poultry. Without any exaggeration, with some salt and metal, this manor could be cut off from the external world and still continue on. All the necessities of life were self-sufficient. Yi Yun let Jiang Shoro preside over the distribution of the land. Based on the size of the population, each person were given about a dozen acres. A hundred people was probably the optimum number of people that could live in Yi Yun's land. The people Yi Yun had brought from the Lian tribal clan were now tenants of Yi Yun. Initially, Yi Yun wanted to take a few percentage of their harvests, but Yi Yun was not going to be limited to this area. Neither did he want to pursue the food that these people survived on. As such, he decided not to take a cut, and all the crop production belonged to the tenants themselves. Because of this, the Lian tribal clan people were extremely indebted to Yi Yun. Where could someone find such a landlord? Back in the Lian tribal clan, a large portion of the fruits of their labor were given up. Every month, they would receive only a tiny amount of food from the Lian tribal clan's headquarters. And back then, the land belonged to the tribe as a whole. But now in the Soft Clouds Mountain Manor, it was all Iyun's. Iyun had given them fields rent-free and provided them with clothing and shelter. Such a master made them willing to die for him. When the lands were distributed, the people's mood was indescribable. They had never seen such broad and fertile land in the vast wilderness. Some old farmers who had been farming for their entire lives burst into tears as they knelt down to kiss the ground. To farmers, the land was life. They had deep feelings for the land that ordinary people could not understand. To have land and food to eat, it was the greatest gift. As a young sister, Zhang Shura was the mistress of the manor. The large fields, with a hundred people had to be managed properly. Who was to rear fish and who was to man the fields were planned. The finances had to be put into order and the family rules had to be complete. Yi Yun had to cultivate and had no time for it. Hence, this responsibility fell on Zhang Shuro. Zhang Shuro had wisdom that was completely inconsistent with her age. Yi Yun got a few housekeepers from the city to teach Zhang Shuro for a few days, and before long, Zhang Shuro had already managed to put the manor in good order. This made Yi Yun rejoice. He had came to this alternate world and gained a sister who cared and took care of him, helping him share the burden. After Yi Yun settled his house matters, he returned to the divine capital and entered the Jin Longwei camp. Yi Yun was not someone who would stay in his house, he had to carry on his military career. Chapter 156 Divine Wilderness Campground Early in the morning, just as the rooster made its morning call, the Jean Longway's recruits gathered in the square. Yi Yun was also living in the military barracks. But as a kingdom knight, he got his own dormitory and it was in good condition. Yen Menglong stood in the middle of the square inspecting the new recruit warriors. Today is the first day you become a soldier. From today, you will receive tough training ranging from one to six years. Many of the Taiya Divine Kingdom's Jin Longwei would reach the late stages of the Purple Blood Realm, and even more would exceed Purple Blood when they retire. A late-stage Purple Blood Warrior had a lifespan of more than a 150 years, and could stay in their prime to a late age. A Jin Longwei could serve for a long time, Hence taking five to six years of training was nothing much. All of you will be divided into three batches to undergo special training. The three batches are. The third batch is to stay in the Divine Capital's campgrounds. You will be trained in the Divine Capital. 
After completing your training, you will become Tai A Divine Kingdom's normal soldiers. If you have any meritorious services, you can be upgraded to an elite. Some feats might even make you a kingdom knight. Everything will depend on yourselves. The second batch is the Zhong State Campgrounds. The Zhong State is the biggest state in the Tai A Divine Kingdom. And it is where the Imperial City is in. Hence, it is controlled by the Imperial Divine Majesty himself. To enter the Zhong State for training is of utmost glory. Those who undergo special training in the Zhong State would become Jin Long Wei elites upon completion. If there are any meritorious services, they will be made Kingdom Knights. As for the last batch, the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds. Qualified personnels are selected by the military division. They can voluntarily decide to go or not. The training grounds will be in the Divine Wilderness Ground. There is no shortage of danger in the Divine Wilderness Grounds and a place full of death. One has to be prepared to die any time within the Divine Wilderness Grounds. The Divine Wilderness Campground is also known as the Death Camp or the Death Gantry. There is a 15% mortality rate there and a 5% chance of disability. Together, it's 20%. Those who train there are the elites among elites. If you aren't careful, you will be doomed eternally. But if you were to complete your training, you will become an elite soldier of the Divine Kingdom. You can even become a human lord in the future. The Divine Wilderness Campground is the Tai A Divine Kingdom's goalpost. If you can jump across it, you will have eternal glory, but if you fall through it, you will smash to smithereens. While saying those words, his focus shifted onto Yi Yun and Song Zijuan. Only Yi Yun and Song Zijuan, within the entire Divine Capital were, qualified to enter the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds. As for them to go or not, it was up to them. Divine Wilderness, Yi Yun muttered to himself. He had learned more about the Tai A Divine Kingdom in the recent days. The Divine Wilderness did not belong to the Tai A Divine Kingdom. In fact, the Divine Wilderness did not belong to any country. Its dimensions were unknown. Its area was more than ten times bigger than the vast Tai A Divine Kingdom. To use one word to describe it, it would be endless. Deep in the divine wilderness lurked real prehistoric giant beasts that had primordial blood. These divine beasts were equivalent to human sages and might even be comparable to a legendary great emperors. The divine wilderness was without end. The Taiya divine kingdom had only explored a small area of the divine wilderness. Due to the many uncontrollable factors of the divine wilderness, the Taiya divine kingdom established a camp in the divine wilderness. Hence, the danger was obvious. To say that the Divine Wilderness Campground was a death gantry was not an exaggeration. Dismissed. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan, stay behind. Yen Menglong was brief. The three camps were distributed in a pyramid fashion. What he was most concerned about was the pinnacle of the pyramid, the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds. Yi Yun. Zijuan. I'm sure you have probably guessed the reason for me keeping you behind. Yen Menglong crossed his arms in front of his chest. He stood with his legs slightly apart and with a grand posture on the stone stage. He overlooked Yi Yun and Song Zijuan. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan nodded. Entering the Divine Wilderness Campground is only by choice. If you do not choose to go, you can choose to go to the Zhong State Campgrounds. There's only a 2% mortality rate there. With your strength, you will definitely be the top of the Zhong State campgrounds and would safely complete your training without any trouble. In the future, you will also get a good position, slowly rising to baron and be a thousand households. You can also marry a few wives and lead a peaceful life as a master, do you want that? Yen Menglong asked them rhetorically. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan answered at the same time, We don't. Serving safely in the Jin Long Way for dozens of years and then be decommissioned, eventually, marrying and having children, living a wealthy squire life before dying after a hundred years. Besides leaving behind bones, nothing was left. 
neither Yi Yun nor Song Zijuan wanted to lead such a life. A person had to have dreams and pursue them. Lin Xintong had such strength, yet she still pursued her terminated meridians. Yi Yun naturally did the same thing. Very good. Yen Menglong nodded with appreciation. If you choose the Divine Wilderness Campground, I have to tell you that there are numerous elites in there. The Divine Wilderness Campground doesn't only have the Jin Long Way. Out of the three campgrounds I mentioned previously, the former two are organized by the Jin Long Way, but the last Divine Wilderness Campground is organized by the Tai A Divine Kingdom. The Jin Long Way only comprises about 10% of the people in the Divine Wilderness Campground. Besides the Jin Long Way, there are also the Ching Luan, Great Argus, Wei, the royal guards and children of large family clans and members of the royal family. These troops and family clan elites would all enter the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds. Once you enter, you will see what it means to be a genius, and what's monstrous. They have been bathing in drugs from the age of three, reaching tempered body at eight years of age. Some might even have a special bloodline, giving them natural strength that makes one envious, and even, there are some geniuses who are considered as youth sages. The Divine Wilderness Campgrounds has a 20% disability rate and it is no laughing matter. Those who fall are top geniuses. Many geniuses who have died have greater talent than you. Hearing Yin Menglong's words, Song Zijuan took a deep breath of air and clenched his fists. He knew that in the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds, no one was weaker than him. There were even many who were stronger than him. In the entire Divine Capital City, only two were chosen, Song Zijuan and Yi Yun. Song Zijuan admitted he was beneath Yi Yun, so he was considered as one of the inferior ones in those who were selected to enter. By being weak, it would be dangerous. He might end up being one of those in the 20% mortality and disability statistics. Yen Menglong carried on, when you go to the Divine Wilderness, you will be representing the Jin Long Way, and representing the Jin Long Way Divine Capital Branch. Do not be an embarrassment for the Jin Long Way, and do not embarrass the Divine Capital Branch. Most importantly, what I want to tell you is, to come back safely. Life is most important. Yen Menglong did not bother to make sure if they regretted their decision, because he had found the answer within their eyes. The Divine Wilderness Campgrounds was a challenge, but it was also a chance. The path of practicing martial arts was to go against heaven. Those who wanted to achieve much had to charge forward bravely. All right, go back and rest for two days. Early on the third morning, an airship will take the two of you there. Oh, yes. I agreed to give you desolate bone relics. As Yin Menglong said that, he flicked his fingers, and two bean-sized crystals flew into Yi Yun's hand. Back then Yin Menglong had said the winner in the competition would receive not only weapons, but desolate bone relics. Thank you, General. Yi Yun caught the two relics with delight. These two things were too critical. Yi Yun had already finished all the fierce bone relics he had accumulated back in the desolate human valley. A warrior's cultivation needed endless amounts of elixirs and relics. To get a horse to run, it had to be fed. Do well. Don't disappoint me. Yen Menglong patted Yi Yun and Song Zijuan firmly on the shoulders and left. He left behind Yi Yun and Song Zijuan who had mixed feelings. Song Zijuan breathed deeply as he clenched his fists, his fingers trembling. Yi Yun was surprised at Song Zijuan's reaction and asked, Scared? Excited? Song Zijuan sighed with his back facing Yi Yun, both I guess. General Yen is right, many of those geniuses who have died from missing the goalpost are stronger than me. In fact, my strength is nothing when placed there. It might end up that my name will be on that 20% mortality and disability list. Yi Yun nodded. The weaker you were, the easier you would be eliminated. In the Tai A Divine Kingdom's 108 states, the Jing state we are in is an average-sized state. And just the Jing state, there are 100 provinces. My Song family clan is considered a pretty good family clan in the Jing state's Nanjun province, but it's just one of many. 
I may be not bad in Nanjun, but it's just not bad. Among the younger generation in the Nanjun, there are many much stronger than me. They just didn't enter the Jin Long Way and went elsewhere. Oh, Yi Yun understood it deeply. The dominating divine capital Jin Long Way recruit camp was nothing much. They were just another division of the Jin Long Way. They only held a small spot in the divine capital and wasn't the be all, end all. Besides, the divine capital was just a big city in the Jing state. Placed in the humongous Tai A divine kingdom, it was nothing. This world was too large. What would the divine wilderness campground with all the young elites of the Tai A divine kingdom be like? Yi Yun was full of anticipation. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan encouraged each other. Later, Yi Yun returned to the Soft Clouds Mountain Manor. He had to handle his house matters. But there was not much to handle. Jiang Xiaoro had settled everything. He only bade farewell to Jiang Xiaoro. Yi Yun was never at ease with Jiang Xiaoro. Thinking back, the people in his family were all kind people. They had been carefully selected by himself from the cloud wilderness. And because they showed gratitude towards him, they adored Jiang Xiaoro from the bottom of their hearts. So there shouldn't be any trouble. On the way back, he entrusted Zhang Tan to take care of the the soft clouds mountain manor. With Zhang Tan, he could feel at ease. At the same time, Yi Yun also hired a few martial artists to protect his house. Occasionally, they could teach Jiang Shiro and Zhou Xiaoka martial arts. It was a helpless case. Yi Yun had rushed to the divine capital and then rushed to the divine wilderness. He had no time to train Jiang Shiro in martial arts. Besides, he was not a skillful master. If only Lin Xintong could train Jiang Xiaoro, it would be great. Lin Xintong, I wonder what happened to her. She had said her family had called her back for something. I wonder what happened. Chapter 157, Traveling to the Divine Wilderness Yuner, that divine wilderness campground, do you have to go? Jiang Xiaoro bit her lips and looked at Yi Yun with complex emotions. Yi Yun did not tell Jiang Xiaoro about the mortality rates in the Divine Wilderness Campground, but Jiang Xiaoro still found out everything about the Divine Wilderness Campgrounds. A 15% mortality rate and a 5% disability rate was too disturbing. I'll be fine. Yi Yun said seriously. Hearing Yi Yun's words, Jiang Xiaoro's lips moved. She wanted to say something but did not say anything in the end. Finally, she just gave Yi Yun a gentle hug. She knew Yi Yun had the life he wanted. What he had decided on, she had no way of changing his mind. A wild horse was destined to belong to the prairie. Jiang Shiro gave everything that Yi Yun could bring with him. She sewed a bag that suited Yi Yun, with a row embroidered on it. There were well wishes the people of the vast wilderness believed in sewn on the back. She also sewed the protective charm Su Jia had given to Yi Yun within, hoping it would keep Yi Yun safe. With that, Yi Yun embarked on his journey. The third day, at the appointed time, the sky had just lit up. Yi Yun carried a beast skin bag that was half the size of a human. He had been waiting in the Jin Longway Square for a long time. Not long after, Song Zijuan's figure appeared in Yi Yun's vision. Both of them nodded at each other. There was not much to say, as they both looked towards the divine wilderness's direction. The two upright figures were like two straight javelins. When the first golden ray of the sun appeared, a emerald green speckle appeared in the distant horizon. Its figure grew and soon, it covered the sky. Yi Yun looked up and secretly clicked his tongue. It was an airship. He had previously seen Lin Xintong in one back in the cloud wilderness. This was a military airship. It was much bigger than the one Lin Xintong was on, but it was less sophisticated. Airships were the Tai A Divine Kingdom's air transports that were worthy of praise. Especially the airships that could cross the Divine Wilderness, they were also called Divine Ships. They were made by several of the Tai A Divine Kingdom's refinement masters. The metals used were all engraved with runes and arrays. 
they had strong defenses and many offensive measures. They could overcome the flying desolate beasts in the divine wilderness. The famous divine naval fleet of the Tai A Divine Kingdom was comprised of divine boats. It was a national symbol of the Tai A Divine Kingdom's strength. The divine ship slowly lowered its height. Round droplets of water under its cold metallic belly flashed with the early morning sunlight. A few mysterious ancient runes inscribed on it shrouded the airship in a sacred halo. Seeing such a mighty airship, Eons was pumped. This was the first time he was flying on such a huge flying treasure. He squeezed the certificate of proof needed for entering the Divine Wilderness Army. Buzz. The airship roared as it suspended itself a hundred meters above the ground. It had stopped its descent. A thick, black metal chain the size of a water bucket fell from the airship's belly, crashing into the ground in front of Yun and Song Zijuan. The heavy iron chains stirred up a dust storm. A cabin door opened in the flying boat's body. A thin, bald middle-aged man stood there with his hands crossed within his sleeves. Commanding from above, he looked down at Yun and Song Zijuan. Are you the divine wilderness campground students that the divine capital Jean Long Wei have chosen? Show me your proof. The man said authoritatively, sending the voice into Yi Yun's ears, as if he was beside Yi Yun. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan answered and threw the certificate of proof upwards. After examining the certificate, the middle-aged man nodded, Good, use the chain to come up here. Yi Yun and Song Zijuan immediately began climbing up the chains, but they realized the metal chains slid within their hands. It seemed like it was covered in layers of china wood oil. Thinking about it, it was a small test. But this test was nothing to Yi Yun and Song Zijuan. With their flexibility, they climbed up the chain agilely like monkeys. Yi Yun was especially outstanding. He climbed up it as if he was walking on flat ground. It made the middle-aged man give him a few more glances. Upon entering the airship, the leader brought them to the northeast corner of the airship. After explaining some of the rules to be observed in the airship, he left. When the leader left, Yi Yun took a look around carefully. Within the airship, there were more than 20 people sitting down. It came to him that these were participants from neighboring cities. There were many people just around the divine capital. These people were all gallant and manly. Some of them did not stop cultivating even on the airship. They sat down meditating. Some exhaled heavily, sending out punches. None of them looked relaxed. This made Yun realize that the people chosen to enter the Divine Wilderness Campground were not ordinary people. Yun did not say much to anyone. He sat down on his spot and began regulating his breathing. Soon, the divine boat flew out of the divine capital's influence. There were about a dozen people who boarded the divine boat in the neighboring cities of the divine capital. After flying to more than ten cities in a row, more than one hundred people had boarded. Following that, there was no one else. The divine boat flew higher and higher into the clouds, and with the array activated, it whistled through the air as it left behind a thunderous roar. Yun could not help but open his eyes and look out the window. The Taiya Divine Kingdom scenery was a spectacle. For a person like Yun who came from a small tribal clan, it was a form of training and accumulation of experience to enjoy the panoramic view of the mountains and rivers. Outside the airship, Yun soon saw a huge roaring river. This river was several hundred miles wide and there were dark shadows within the river. Suddenly a shadow billowed out the waters. It was a giant beast many times the size of a whale. It leaped out from the water and grabbed a giant bird in the sky before diving back into the water. Yun could not help but be shocked. He had never seen such a murderous water beast. He also saw there were flocks of strange birds that blocked out the sky in the endless desert. Their wings span a hundred feet and their flaps caused the airship to experience turbulence. Also in the vast ocean, there were many tiny islands appearing out of the water for air. It spit out rainbows. They were actually colossal giant tortoises. 
Many wonderful beasts amazed Yi Yun as it was an eye opening experience. The Taiya Divine Kingdom was extremely vast, but after flying for a few days, the airship charged into a towering giant fortress. The fortress had a magnificent array within it with countless numbers of crystals that radiated brilliant energy into the sky. These were the super long distance arrays. As the Taiya Divine Kingdom was too big, and the Divine Wilderness was too far away, just flying in the airships were taken extremely long time. Hence, they had to rely on ancient arrays to travel. Yi Yin counted and they had entered three such magnificent fortress arrays. They had been teleported three times, which was a distance on tens of millions of miles. Finally, they reached a barren wasteland near the Divine Wilderness. The Lian tribal clan was originally in the Cloud Wilderness, which was beside the Jing state. But the Divine Wilderness was at the other end of the Divine Kingdom. Traveling from the Jing state to the Divine Wilderness covered a large area of the Tai A Divine Kingdom. The journey was too far. The setting sun was blood red as its glow spilled on the airship. At the top of the airship, there were a few potholes. They were arrays embedded within the extraordinary metal to protect the divine boat. On their journey, they had been attacked twice by desolate beasts. And they left some traces on the metal. Divine Wilderness We've reached the Divine Wilderness. In the divine boat, someone shouted. Everyone rushed to the hall and looked out. Ian raised his eyebrows as he looked through the airship's glass window. He found that in the distance, the fog was dispersed. It seemed like a jungle's atmosphere had surged over. Ayo! Oh. The roar shook the world. Below them, there was dust all over. There were many large behemoths running on the dust plains. Their hooves rumbled on the ground like thunder. In the distant horizon, a black jungle spanned across. Each huge tree was like a beam rising into the blue sky. There were sharp cries in the sky. They were numerous flying beasts swooping around and their razor-sharp claws were like blades. A beast that looked like a lion had been grabbed from the chaotic dust storm as its blood smeared the sky. Even further away, there was a mountain that towered into the clouds. There was a bright light circulating around it like a heaven realm. But this divine realm would shoot out black web-like silk capturing monsters that passed it. Some of the mountain peaks were also bare and lifeless. A mountain was shrouded by a huge lion in a prone position. Its snores was thundering. When the airship reached this area, it began to fly more carefully. It flew to an even higher altitude. Below the airship was endless mountain stretches. Occasionally, a large black swamp or sweltering desert could be seen. There were mountain piles of white skeletons in those places. This is the divine wilderness, Eun took a deep breath for the divine wilderness was too mighty and dreadful. Look, isn't that a crackling fire beast? Someone suddenly said as Eun looked down. He saw in the wilderness plains below the flying boat were small mountains of bones. Within these bones, there was something flowing like lava. It was apparently a crackling fire beast. But now, the crackling fire beast had been killed. Its innards were exposed and a colorful huge bird was sitting on it, devouring its flesh. Yi Yun's eyes twitched. He knew that the cloud wilderness also had crackling fire beasts, and was a well-known beast in the cloud wilderness. But in the divine wilderness, it had become the prey of the colorful huge bird. There was danger at every turn in the divine wilderness. It was daunting. Compared to the cloud wilderness, it was at a totally different level. The cloud wilderness was a barren land with little heaven earth yuan chi. Hence, it could not give birth to treasures or strong desolate beasts. There was a lack of types like grand giant beasts that were of the primordial species. The cloud wilderness's strongest desolate beasts would enter desolate wastes to the north of the desolate human valley. The desolate wastes were two completely different places from the cloud wilderness. But the divine wilderness was different. It had countless numbers of grand giant beasts within it. Normal people could survive, with great difficulty, in the cloud wilderness, 
but in the divine wilderness, there were no normal people. Very few people treaded these lands. There were legends that there were mysterious tribes within that had special blood heritage. They were mysterious and powerful. Chapter 158, Central Divine Tower What is that huge flame-colored bird? Yi Yun asked the person behind him. He had gained a few friends in these last few days. It's a ferocious fire bird. It has the bloodline of the primordial desolate beast Vermilion Bird. It and the crackling fire beast are both fire elemental desolate beasts. Consuming another fire elemental beast will help its development. Although they are both desolate beasts, the difference in their strengths is tremendous, said a slightly plump youth beside Yi Yun. This youth's name was Su Zheng. He was one of Yi Yun's newfound friends that he gained while traveling. Su Zheng touched his plump chin and licked his lips, desolate beasts with primordial bloodlines, TSK TSK. They give great benefits to one's body. If you can capture and refine a ferocious firebird into a desolate bone relic, it would be priceless on the market. There will be no shortage of people rushing to buy it. These days, Yi Yun had learned the different desolate beasts' strength classification. The weakest were normal desolate beasts. The only difference from fierce beasts was their ability to manipulate Heaven Earth Yuan Qi. It was similar to the mortal blood warriors before the Qi Gatherer realm and those who had broken through to the Qi Gatherer and above. After normal desolate beasts, there were the elite ranked desolate beasts, general ranked desolate beasts, king ranked desolate beasts. Further up, there were rumors of primal ranked desolate beasts and primordial ranked desolate beasts. These were beyond Eon's comprehension scope. For a desolate beast to be strong, the most important criteria was its bloodline. Typically, a desolate beast with a primordial bloodline tends to be stronger. If one could kill a primordial type and obtain its bones and blood, one could make them into a relic and elixirs and their value would be immeasurable. Of course, this was too far away for Yi Yun. He found it difficult to beat normal desolate beasts, not to even mention how he would do against primordial types. As it started to turn dark, a commotion aroused within the airship. Upon hearing this, Yi Yun looked out into the distance. What he saw completely shocked him. He had previously heard that the Divine Wilderness Campground was located within a city. This city stood within the Divine Wilderness and was known as the Divine City of the Tai A Divine Kingdom. Words are but wind, but seeing is believing. Now, after seeing the city, Eun knew why it was called Divine City. Within millions of miles of endless gray plains, there stood a city. It was built on the peak of a gigantic outcrop. The city was a black citadel. The foundation stone pillars were below it. It was a shaved-off summit, dozens of miles in radius and tens of thousands meters high. A city built on top of a rock pillar which was tens of thousands meter high, made it look like a black dragon from afar. It was hard to imagine that the Tai A Divine Kingdom had built such a city in the Divine Wilderness. Even the most capable human would sigh with emotion when seeing this. As the airship approached, Yi Yun slowly saw the city's silhouette come into view. The sight made him feel a majestic aura, as if an emperor god was attacking him, both mentally and physically. Yi Yun's chest started to fill with an unknown vigor, as if his blood was set on fire. To use magnificent to describe a city such as this would be insufficient. The city's base was already tens of thousands of meters tall. Inside the city, there were tall buildings, some of them even pierced through the clouds themselves. The walls around the city seemed to be connected to the sky, as if they were endless. There was a huge, dark brown colored square in front of the city. It looked like it had been covered in blood, revealing an endless amount of killing and vigor. Beside the square, there were thick and tall old trees, which resembled green giants. The entire city was situated on a sharp cliff, the cliff walls were smooth like mirrors. There were no roads, only water bucket sized black metal chains that linked the jagged parts of the cliff to the plains tens of thousands meters below. Looking at it from below, the chains were huge and lofty at the bottom, while the other end looked thin in the distance, 
as they eventually disappeared into the clouds. It was horrifying. These chains were bridges that hung in the void and they were the only entrances into the city from the divine wilderness plains. Such construction made it difficult to enter and exit the city. But it had a great advantage, it was easy to defend. The divine wilderness would occasionally have beast hordes. In these beast hordes, there was no lack of king-ranked desolate beasts. If it was an ordinary city, it would long since have been flooded by a beast horde. Having a city built on an outcrop tens of thousands meters high, standing all alone at the pinnacle, once the chains were withdrawn normal desolate beasts would no longer have any way of attacking. The airship landed on the square in front of the city. There were dozens of vessels, the same size as the large airship they were on, parked in the square. There were many strong-looking guards standing in the square. Yi Yun, Song Zijuan, and the hundred other people from the airship followed the thin bald man in disembarking. The moment he disembarked the airship, Yi Yun felt an extremely dense and oppressive heaven earth yuan chi. The heaven earth yuan chi here was more than ten times denser than in the cloud wilderness. The density of heaven earth yuan chi was very important for a warrior's cultivation, hence, the divine wilderness was considered by many warriors to be a sacred cultivation ground. Finally standing in the square, Eun felt the majestic aura of the city. The Tai A Divine Kingdom's number one city, the Tai A Divine City. The Zhong State Royal Capital was the central city of the Tai A Divine Kingdom, it was magnificent and had a grandiose atmosphere. However to the Tai A Divine Kingdom's warriors, this city that stood in the distant divine wilderness was the true number one city of the Tai A Divine Kingdom. Over the tens of millions of years, the Taiya Divine City had nurtured numerous numbers of warriors for the Taiya Divine Kingdom. They cultivated here, they killed and grew here. How does it feel? The bald leader spoke with pride. The Taiya Divine City was the pride of the Taiya Divine Kingdom. When standing on the tens of thousands meter tall city walls, looking at the endless plains of the divine wilderness below, pride would inevitably rise up in every divine kingdom warrior. Let's enter the city. The bald man led them with a wave, bringing all these young heroes into the city. The sky was already turning dark at this point. The city walls were dimly glowing with inscriptions before they lit up one by one. It made Eun clearly feel a mighty energy fluctuation. These were inscription arrays made by the Tai A Divine Kingdom's array masters over hundreds of millions of years. Heaven Earth Yuan Chi was injected within, allowing every inch of the city wall to be impregnable. On the city wall's crenels, there were ballistae with fine inscriptions on them, as their muzzles pointed outwards in all directions. The ballista's cold arrowheads would shimmer with purple energy. Together with the entire city wall's array, it gave off a subtle trill. These ballistae were like beasts in the night. Although they were not pointing at Yi Yun, they gave him a thin layer of goosebumps. When a beast horde would appear, the greatest threat came from the attacks of flying desolate beasts. These ballistae were the nemesis of these flying desolate beasts. Hence, this city was the amalgamation of uncountable numbers of Taiya Divine Kingdom warriors' wisdom as well as their flesh and blood. At this moment, the city gates opened. Ian followed the bald man into the Taiya Divine City. There were not many people in the streets, so they looked empty. Upon entering the city, the most prominent building was a large tower in the city center. This tower was squarish in shape and half of its height had broken through the clouds. Its spire blurred within the clouds. It looked like a huge pyramid. Iyun compared it to the surrounding buildings and found out that, all the buildings around it made the pyramid size become even more exaggerated, it was like a huge mountain by itself. Layer after layer of the pyramid was filled with exits, which made it look like a beehive. Flying beasts and airship could be seen shuttling though these exits. In the face of this huge pyramid, those huge beasts and airships were as small as mosquitoes. That is the central divine tower. The top level is the residence of the Divine Wilderness City City Lord and its three elders. The Taiya Divine City's elites live in the lower levels. The bald man casually introduced it tersely before taking them deeper into the city. 
The deeper Yi Yun entered the city, the more shocked he became. The various buildings within the city were not exquisite. But their ruggedness and magnificence emitted a sturdy and solid aura. Its steadfastness was breathtaking. Some of the building materials used even had several primordial type desolate bones. Yi Yun could feel the undulating souls of the beasts. Such buildings were solid and grand in construction. Even if a desolate beast were to enter the city, it would find it extremely difficult to destroy these buildings. Even the ordinary houses on the streets were covered with protective arrays. They looked ancient and simple. Some of the commoners' houses had beams made out of the shin bones of unknown beasts. It was amazing to use bones as beams. Oh? What's that? A young hero found that there were black round metal platforms by both sides of the street. These round platforms were lined neatly and above each one there was a stone sculpture in the shape of a human bust. Below the stone sculptures were some text. One of the round platforms wrote, In 2164 WD, Gaoji stood on the heaven-earth stage and lasted for 3 minutes 24 seconds. He had broken the records of the ancestors. This record is to encourage future generations. Heaven-earth stage? What's that? Yi Yun was puzzled. This Gao Ji was naturally a person's name. If he wasn't wrong, the bust was Gao Ji. This half-man sculpture was that of a teenager with a daring sense. As for 2164W.D, it was the year that marked the beginning of the divine emperor of the Tai A Divine Kingdom, Wanda. He was a divine emperor from 50,000 years ago. That was to say that this metal round platform and the bust had stood there for 50,000 years. This Gaoji person had most likely passed away. Are these the records left behind by warriors training in the divine wilderness? Ian understood that this street lined with metal platforms and sculptures recorded all the geniuses that appear in this divine city. They had accomplished splendid achievements in the divine city and their records gave them a permanent place in history. Chapter 159, Sage Avenue The street went straight into the heart of the city. This was Taya Divine City's main road that went from the southern gate to the city's center. Whoever entered from the southern entrance had to pass by this road. Hence, to place the sculptures here meant immense glory. The bald man said, this road is known as Sage Avenue. Whenever a warrior in the Divine Wilderness Campground breaks a record in the Divine City, his name will be left here in Sage Avenue. A sculptor master will carve a sculpture to be placed on the Sage platforms. To be able to have your bust and name left in the Divine City is a great honor. There is no lack of people dreaming of this. But, it's too hard. In the past 200 years, there have been no new names or busts. If anyone has the ability, they would have that tiny chance to become a human sage. And because of this, this road is known as Sage Avenue. To become a sage. Hearing these words, the young heroes were extremely excited. A human sage was a person who could summon the rain with a flick of his hand. Back then, the Taya Divine Kingdom's founding emperor was a sage. Of course, among the sages in the Tai A Divine Kingdom, he was one of the best. They did not need to be one of the best amongst the sages. Even the lowest sage rank was an extreme figure. No matter where they went, they would be given the utmost respect. Even the ancient family clans would be respectful. From the youths that came to the Divine Wilderness Campground, which one did not want to become a top warrior? This sage avenue had stirred their excitement. Many people stopped moving forward. They stopped and began reading the words written on the metal platforms. The bald man did not stop them and permitted them to carry on looking. These things were placed here to honor the ancient heroes and to inspire the future generations. Letting these young people take a look was a good thing. Oh! Qing Feng Year 634 Zhou Tianping entered the top 1,000 spots within the three rolls of honor simultaneously. He had broken the records of the ancestors. This record is to encourage future generations. Qingfeng Divine Emperor, 
then that's a divine emperor from 100,000 years ago. And he entered the top 1,000 spots within the three roles of honor? What's the three roles of honor? The Taiya divine city had always been mysterious. Even the youths from some smaller family clans did not know the rules of the Taiya divine city. The three roles of honor are the heaven, earth, and man roles. These three roles are extremely important in the Tai A Divine City. You will see it in the future. The bald man said before proceeding forward. The hundred young heroes walked along the street with their eyes focused on the metal platforms that lined both sides of the street. The outstanding figures that had their names engraved on the metal platforms filled them with sincere admiration. Oh! Jing states Wang Li Xiao. Isn't he one of the four presiding army commanders? Back then General Li had came to the Divine Wilderness Campground for training, and even left his name on the sage platform. A youth discovered it and immediately attracted a lot of attention from the others. The Jing State's Wang Li Xiao was an idol of many young warriors. To see their idol's name here excited them greatly. If they could leave their name here, it would be great. These were the thoughts of many people. Of course, they knew that this was an incredibly difficult achievement. The bald man led them into a rustic building in the rear of the city. Everyone was given a token. Mark an imprint within the token with your spiritual energy. In the next six years, this token will be your identity symbol. Yi Yun took a token and it felt heavy in the hand. The token was palm-sized and was about a few dozen pounds in weight. The front of the token was filled with inscriptions and on the back were the words Divine Wilderness in ancient script. Yi Yun imprinted his spiritual energy into the token. Soon, golden runes lit up from the token, making it sparkle. Oh! This is, the golden runes were like scales. It surprised Yi Yun. These dragon scales runes are the most basic item for warriors here. Without dragon scale runes, they can't do anything. Every expense within the Tai A Divine City for warriors, including resources, cultivation techniques, relics, training grounds need to be bought with dragon scale runes. Slowly, you will understand the importance of dragon scale runes. The bald man explained by the side. I see, so dragon scale runes are the currency of the Tai A Divine City, Yi Yun counted the number of dragon scale runes he had within his token. There were only ten. The bald man said, from today, this will be where you will be staying. The stone houses behind you is where you will live. These stone houses are the lowest class houses in the Tai A Divine City. It is provided free of charge. Food here is also provided free of charge, but of course, it's the most inferior. The lowest class houses and the most inferior food? All these young heroes were unordinary people. Hence the words lowest class and inferior were extremely harsh to the ears. A youth could not help but ask, what about the superior residences? What are the benefits? If we want to change to those places, what requirements do we need to meet? The bald man said, the Taiya Divine City's residences are divided into lower class, middle class, upper class, and the central divine tower. The lower class residences are free. The middle class residences charge two dragon scale runes a day. Upper class residences charge five dragon scale runes a day. As for the residences within the central divine tower, they charge at least 50 dragon scale runes a day. The Central Divine Tower's residences? All the young heroes consciously looked towards the city center. That mountain like pyramid made them feel extremely small. Out of the four types of residences in the Tai A Divine City, the lower, middle, and upper class had similar prices. But once it reached the Central Divine Tower, the price jumped ten times and began at fifty dragon scale runes. It was obvious there were plenty of advantages living in the central divine tower. The bald man said, the Taiya Divine City's central divine tower is a huge array that gathers heaven earth yuan chi. The Taiya Divine City is itself built on a wonderland vein and is thick in heaven earth yuan chi. 
Together with the central divine tower's array, all the heaven earth Yuan Chi in a hundred mile radius gathers towards the Tai A divine city. Hence, the central divine tower is the place which has the densest heaven earth Yuan Chi. The higher you go in the central divine tower, the thicker the heaven earth Yuan Chi is. The density in the top level reaches an inconceivable point. 50 dragon scale runes is to stay within the lowest levels of the central divine tower. The higher one goes, the more expensive it becomes. The Taiya Divine Tower has 99 levels. From level 50 onwards, the prices become extremely exaggerated. From level 70 onwards, the price becomes astronomical. The young heroes that come to the Taiya Divine City have no ways of affording it. Affording it? Then who stays in the rooms above level 70? Someone could not help but asked. The bald man said, in the Tai A Divine Kingdom, there are many fathomless people like dukes, grand dukes, and some reclusive old human monsters. Typically, these people can stay above level 70. So that's it. The young heroes looked at each other. Those people had power beyond their comprehension. Indeed, for the Tai A Divine City to be the number one city in the Tai A Divine Kingdom, and it being a city for warriors, it was a place for these young heroes from all around the country to train. But it did not only belong to them. The best cultivation grounds above level 70 were of course given priority to these super experts. For a teenager kid to go up and use it? Difficult. The bald man continued, above level 95, there are top class rooms. In the Tai A Divine City, there are only 20 such rooms. Even with vast amounts of dragon scale runes, one is not qualified to stay within. Unless you have the absolute value or have obtained stunning results giving you enough glory points, then can you enter. Hearing the bald man's words, everyone felt depressed. This central divine tower was good, but its requirements were too high, especially those rooms on the high levels. They were not prepared for kids like them. From the bald man's words, they could tell that he meant that for them to stay in the lower levels of the central divine tower would be extremely good. It would be amazing if a few outstanding people could live at a dozen stories. First stay here. Tomorrow, I'll bring you to the cultivation grounds. That cultivation is a chance, so take good advantage of it. As he said those words, the bald man turned around. The youth sighed before walking to their dormitory. These low-class residences were at the edge of the Tai A Divine City. The rows of houses numbered a hundred. Eun looked through a few rooms and realized something. Oh! The same free room, but the living conditions are so great in difference? Some of the rooms had spirit-gathering arrays, resulting in the Yuan Chi in the room to be thicker. But other rooms had nothing and was the same as outside the house. To cultivate in such houses would be naturally difficult. Yun sensed the area carefully and quickly found the houses with the thickest heaven earth Yuan Chi. On the wall of this house wrote. House rating, middle class. Required dragon scale runes, none. Oh? Middle class room? Yun was surprised that mixed in this low class residence were five middle class rooms and they were free. Then who wouldn't want to live in the middle-class house? But, the bald man did not assign any room numbers to them. Hence, anyone was eligible to stay in these middle-class rooms. Yun could faintly guess the reason for such an arrangement by the Tai A Divine City. Yun pondered for a while and walked towards the room. Just as he crossed the door, a cold voice came from behind him suddenly, Sorry, these five houses are ours. Yun turned his head and saw a majestic-looking youth. His arms were crossed in front of his chest as he sneered at Yun. The youths that came to the Tai A Divine City were about the same age. But the man in front of him was very much like an adult be it his height or build. When this youth matured, he would probably grow to be as strong as a tower. Chapter 160, Thousand Army Sabers First Battle Eun knitted his eyebrows as the youth said, let me introduce myself. I'm Zhou Kuei from the Xuanwu Asterisk Army. 
The entire Tai A Divine Kingdom did not only have the Jin Long Wei as its only military division. The Xuanhu Army was one of the other Trump military divisions of the Tai A Divine Kingdom. A normal Xuanwu army soldier was on average, inferior to a normal Jin Long Wei warrior. But the size of the Xuanwu army was ten times that of the Jin Long Wei. Besides that, the Xuanwu army also specially nurtured an elite corps. The people from this elite corps were not weaker than the Jin Long Wei elites. The Xuanwu army was stationed in the north of the Tai A Divine Kingdom and there were branches in the Jing state. Hence, accompanying Yi Yun and Song Zijuan were a large number of Xuanwu army personnel. When Yi Yun was stopped by Zhou Kuei, the other Jin Longwei personnel came over. The military was a cohesive entity. Whenever there was a conflict, people of similar backgrounds would help one another unanimously against external threats. If a fight was to occur, it was a fight to fight together. Brother Yi, what's the matter? Su Sheng, who Yi Yun had gotten to know, came over. He too was from the Jin Long Way. Yi Yun sent a signal with his eyes and the people immediately understood what was going on. He he, with five rooms, we should allocate them accordingly, but the Xuanwu army wants them all? That's too high-handed. Who do you think you are, said someone behind Yi Yun. Immediately, all the Xuanwu army personnel stood behind Zhou Kuei. The soldiers' bodies from the Xuanwu army were generally bigger than the Jin Longwei members. In contrast, the Jin Longwei soldiers only number a dozen, a lot less. A dozen against three dozen. Yi Yun took a look at the stout Zhou Kuei. He knew the intentions of the Tai A Divine City. By arranging there to be a few middle class rooms mixed in with the lower class rooms, Without any allocation, it was to put the warriors who came into the Tai A Divine City into a competitive state from the very beginning. Competition, Battling, Elimination This was the purpose of the Divine Wilderness Campground's deadly goalpost. A simple competition for residence spots reflected this. Zhou Kuei clearly understood the rules too. He said without fear, in the Tai A Divine City, strength is king. The five middle class rooms placed here are obviously for us to compete over. He he, I like to compete. The Jin Long Wei wants to take a spot for themselves? Sure. We can have a competition here today. Whoever wins gets to stay in it. The Xuanwu army had a daunting presence, and they had the advantage in numbers. As Yin Menglong said, none of the young heroes who could stand here were weaklings. The Jin Long Wei's dozen people against the Xuanwu armies, three dozen people had a predictable outcome. Even Yi Yun, who was confident in his own strength, could not fight one against many. I know Zhou Ku Wei. His cultivation level is at the middle stages of purple blood, nearly entering the late stages. Su Zhang said beside Yi Yun. The situation was that they would definitely suffer if they went to battle. But if they did not fight, the Jin Long Wei would be disgruntled to just hand over all the middle class rooms. The Xuanwu army had encircled the rooms. Zhou Kuei laughed as he cracked his knuckles, giving off a provocative feeling. His muscles tightened up and became similar to granite. It was hard to imagine that he was actually a 14 year old teenager. Today, I'll stand here and represent the Xuanwu army. Who wants to come up and fight me? If you beat me, you will have the right to take one room. Zhou Kuei knew that with such an arrangement by the Tai A Divine City, it was all right to have private matches as long as the opponent was not maimed. Yi Yun looked at Zhou Kuei. Zhou Kuei had two weapons, a war blade and a warhammer. They were both hanging along his back. It was rare to see a hammer as a weapon. Only people with great strength used hammers as their attack speed was slow and were incomparable to swords and sabers. As for the war blade Zhou Kuei had, it was an extremely heavy war blade with a thick handle. It was completely different from Yi Yun's Thousand Army Saber. The Thousand Army Saber's blade was long and narrow and had a tiny curvature, making it look more like a sword. Compared to Zhou Kuei's war blade, they were two completely different weapons. Yi Yun muttered slightly as his eyes flashed strangely. 
The Taiya Divine City was a place with cutthroat competition. Since he was here, Yi Yin decided to accept the rule that the weak were the prey of the strong. There were too many geniuses in the Tai A Divine City, if you did not suppress others, others would suppress you. In fact, not only in the Tai A Divine City, on the long martial arts path, if one wanted to carry walking down that path, one would continuously face competition. To mature and become stronger meant one had to fight for what belonged to them. Yun did not say a word and slowly unbuttoned his collar buttons. He took out a light chiffon and handed it casually to Su Zheng. Help me hold it, Yun said. He had handed Su Zheng his flowing mercury gown. Su Zheng paused because he could not tell what Yun had handed him. Zhou Kuei did not react either. His arms were still held by his chest as he stood there boldly waiting for a challenger. His eyes swept the surroundings without much care. Even Yi Yun's action of taking off the flowing mercury gown was not given much attention, just a short glance. His attention was not on Yi Yun specifically as he did not think Yi Yun was anyone special amongst the dozen Jean Longwei people. At this time, Yi Yun moved. Without any warning or words, his body shot out like lightning. His speed was extremely fast. Sha! The Thousand Army Saber was unsheathed. Ever since he grasped at the entrance of the large success stage of Minute Subtlety, his speed could only be described as terrifying. Twang! The Thousand Army Saber slashed through the air, generating a sharp sound. But this sound could not follow the Thousand Army Saber's speed. Ha! Zhou Kuei's pupils constricted. His reaction was extremely fast as he retreated quickly. At the same time, he released the arms across his chest and was about to take out the war blade and war hammer from his back. But just as he touched the blades and hammer's handle and retreated three steps, Ian's thousand army saber blade had reached Jokuei's throat. The cold blade had a murderous chill. Jokuei's neck started to bleed. If Ian had not withdrawn the thousand army saber in that hundredth of a second, Jokuei's neck would have been cut apart. This long saber was not any ordinary short saber. Just the blade was almost the same height as Yi Yun. When held by Yi Yun, he had an awesome aura. Zhou Kuei stood motionless as his forehead was sweating. In that moment, he had sensed death. The people standing around were silent as they looked at this scene with stunned looks. Yu attacked sneakily. Zhou Kuei's eyes stared at Yi Yun's blade. He said it while holding his breath. If he breathed too vigorously, he could not guarantee that the blade would not cut through his throat. Zhou Kuei was nursing a grievance. He had been crossing his hands in front of chest, with his blade behind him. He had just announced the match, and Yi Yun suddenly attacked him. He had not even revealed any of his abilities and had nearly been instantly killed by a kid half a head shorter than him. After hunting hawks for his entire life, to be pecked in the eye by a sparrow was a great humiliation. On the battlefield, will an enemy ask you if you are ready before killing you? Yi Yun did not withdraw his saber. The blade tip was still against. Zhou Kuei's neck, making it difficult for him to speak. Zhou Kuei shut his mouth because the ultralong battle saber in Yi Yun's hand gave him too much pressure. At this time, the Xuanwu army exploded. They were disgruntled and began shouting, too despicable. It was a sneak attack, and yet he made it sound so high and mighty. If you have any ability, withdraw your saber and fight a decent match with Brother Kuei. Zhou Kuei's strength was one of the highest among them. Due to his exceptional strength, when Zhou Kuei used that war blade and war hammer, there was no one who could face him. As for Zhou Kuei's speed, it was relatively weaker. But Yi Yun, he was noted for his speed. Together with his sneak attack, it made Zhou Kuei not even have the chance to pull out his blade, hence causing him to be in a situation where he lost in a single strike. But Yi Yun could not be bothered with their words. If anything was to blame, it was on Zhou Kuei's arrogance. His hands were still crossed around his chest when he announced the match. If this was a battlefield, you would already be dead, Yi Yun said lightly. Zhou Kuei's face turned red. 
He was resentful, but he knew that what Yoon said was the truth. He was someone flexible. Whether it was Yoon's sneak attack or not, or whether his strength was greater than Yoon, the truth of the matter was that he had lost to Yoon. You sure are ruthless. Joe Kue gnashed his teeth saying. One of the middle class rooms is yours. Joe Kue conceded and Yoon sheathed his saber. Joe Kue looked angrily at Yoon. What's your name? E Yun. E Yun? Good. I fell against you today, but I'll remember you. I will take back the pride you took today. I will let you know the taste of my Ghost King blade and the Cranium Crusher. E Yun did not take Joe Kuei's word of resentment to heart. He carried his thousand army saber and walked into his room. These five rooms could not all be given to the Jin Long Wei. The Xuanwu army had no way of taking them all. It all depended on who had the ability and the strength. Yi Yun could not help the weak. Yi Yun sized up the room. It was a plain stone house with extremely simple furnishings. A beam made from desolate bones, a stone bed, a stone desk, a chair and a spirit gatherer array. The desolate bone was nothing special and with age, there was extremely limited energy left within it. As for the stone bed, it did not even have any bedding. It was empty and hard. This bed would cause a normal person's body to hurt after a night's sleep. The reason why there was no bedding in the Tai A Divine City's rooms was to tell the warriors coming here to train that they should replace sleep with meditation. Coming to the Tai A Divine City was not to enjoy life. If they wanted to enjoy life, they should stay in their fiefs. In their six years in the Tai A Divine City, one had to train hard and strive to move forward. Translator note, Xuanwu is also known as the Black Turtle, one of the four mythological creatures in the Chinese constellations.